is ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Oklahoma strikes quickly. Perfectly thrown ball by Josh Heifel. No candidate has dominated campaign 2000 like Oklahoma. Goes Every vote is a landslide. No matter who's voting. No matter who's counting. No matter how many times they re-vote. The Sooners are number one. Quarterback Josh Heupel now sits atop the Heisman exit polls. He floats passes like butterflies and follows the arrows straight to the end zone. But welcome to Aggieland. Playing in the shadow of the George Bush Library, the wrecking crew is determined to stop the Oklahoma victory march. Today, we promise you a decision. at home. The B-1 Bombers roll overhead. NRC Slocum trots onto the field. The number one Oklahoma Sooners, a 10-point favorite at the Texas A&M Aggies. The Big 12 South tells you the story. Texas A&M and Texas both need help in their pursuit of the Sooners. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome with Gary Danielson. I'm Brad Busberger. Well, Gary, for Oklahoma, it is a four-game march to the Orange Bowl in the national championship. But Sooner fans will tell you, players and coaches, this could be their toughest game left. Well, absolutely, Brent. I mean, this offense and Josh Heupel have been getting all the headlines. But let me give you another headline. They play defense here, too. Bobby Stoops has them going, and he's got two great linebackers to build this defense around. Torrance Marshall, Rocky Kalmus, basically they've been unblockable when you watch them on film. If AM can't handle those guys, they're not going to win this football game. Now, Texas AM has a pretty interesting quarterback, 25 year old. Mark Ferris is the guy. He's the other quarterback in this game. And when you do that, you need the poise of a Mark Ferris. He's very, very heady, has great quarterback presence, and today he has to just do his job. Ignore what's happening, just do his job. The 12th man at Aggieland, the student body. The coach has been firing him up all week. He's with Jack Aru, Jack. And Brent, they are expecting the biggest football crowd ever to watch a football game in the Lone Star State. Coach, how important is the crowd today? It's very important. We've only lost here six times in the last 12 years, and the 12th man has a whole lot to do with that. It's going to be a great day. Well, good luck to you, Coach. All right, thanks, Jack. We'll be back with the opening kickoff from Kyle Field right after this. The Sooners of Oklahoma win the toss and defer. So the Aggies of AM will start first from the 20 yard line with their 25 year old quarterback, Mark Ferris, bringing his team out. And let's check in on our Chili's starting lineup. Jamar Toombs, big Jamar Toombs, 12 touchdowns this season and only 86 carries. Robert Ferguson, keep an eye on number six's ankle and knee, both injured last week. Torrance Marshall and Rocky Kalmus, the two linebackers that Gary told you about at the top. And Roy Williams, the hard-hitting, strong safety for the Sooners in that secondary. Ferris now brings the Aggie offense to the line of scrimmage, and number 10 immediately deploys a slot to the right. Motion in behind him. And on an end around, Goins with the game's first carry for four yards to the 24-yard line. This offensive line, Seth McKinney, one-time high school teammate, a Purdue quarterback, Drew Brees, anchors this line, matched against the defensive line, and the Aggie assistants telling us, 94, Ryan Fisher, the left tackle for the Sooners, could be very tough for them to block here today, so we'll keep an eye as that unfolds. Fisher now ready to get down. Goins again, they'll fake it, and Ferris rolls hard to the right on the run, throws complete. And there is number nine, Bethel Johnson, with a 14-yard gain and an Aggie first down. Now, beyond the numbers with Mark 
Ferris, the second time through the buffet line. You see, he was a highly touted minor league baseball player in the Pirate organization. Now, full time student, full time quarterback, married, and with a four year old daughter here in attendance, watching the 25 year old Ferris operate this Aggie offense with a first and 10 on their own 39 yard line. Richard Whitaker, and a timeout is called by Ferris. Something he wants to check with the coaches. Mark Ferris's wife, the lovely Neosha Ferris, holding their baby. Four year old daughter Cameron watching Pops operate this offense now on the first series of the game against the Oklahoma Sooners. Ferris brings him back up to the Texas AM 39 yard line. We'll sort the penalty out here. Well, movement on that AM offensive line is going to cost him five after a timeout here. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. It'll be a five yard penalty. And Let's take a look down. at our Dell game solutions. What AM has to do to really win this game, they have to jar him with Jamar Toombs. He has big games, 86 yards and three touchdowns against Kansas State. And they got to find those two linebackers if they have any chance. Oklahoma's defense will make big plays. They have 24 turnovers and always they want to harass that quarterback. First and 15, three wide outs, out to Ferris's left from the shotgun. Here's an option look, Whitaker is stuffed, and a great hit that time by Roy Williams, the strong safety. We asked Mark Ferris how you attack this Oklahoma defense. We can't concentrate on the run or the pass. We have to mix it up because they're a defense that if you try to do one thing, just pound them or you try to throw it every down, they're going to figure that out. Look at Nebraska. Nebraska started off really well, and then they kind of faded. You know, they figured them out. So we feel like we have to keep them off balance. Very true words. Second and 17, passing down for the Aggies. They deploy four wide outs. They throw underneath. Ferguson makes his first catch, and he is down at the 37-yard line, almost back to the original line of scrimmage, so it'll be third and long coming up for the Aggies. Robert Ferguson is the go-to guy. He's the only receiver that has put on more than 100 yards in a game. Slightly injured. He's got his ankle taped. Thought it was a knee, but as the Season as the week wore on, it turned more into the ankle problem. He did not practice much at all this week, just yesterday. Doesn't look to me, Brent, that he's full speed, but he can make those short catches. Big guy. Need 11 yards. Bethel Johnson is off to the right. A slot to the wide side for the Aggies. Good protection for the first down. Incomplete. Had his man and misfires, and the offensive line gave Mark Ferris a lot of quality time. Ferris did a good job of coming to his third receiver that time, but Cor Corey Heineke, number 89, got right in his face, and Ferris had to pull the trigger just before he wanted to. That's it. Just enough of harassing that quarterback made a difference. J.T. Thatcher, a big play return man for the Sooners, who are about ready to come on the attack for the first time. Cody Skates hunting it. Takes an Aggie hop. Thatcher gets out of the way, and this one's down inside the 15-yard line. So Josh Heupel will have to come out from the Sooners' 12-yard line. A 50-yard punt. Timeout. Brent, one of the things that the a and Aggies are going to try and do is break a sound record set on October 1st, 2000 at Mile High Stadium. You see this meter? When it goes above 128.7 dBs, they'll have the Guinness World Record. They're going to try and do it right now. Better you than me down there close <laughs> to him, by now. Josh Heupel, the quarterback from Aberdeen, South Dakota, who has led OU to the top of the charts. Incomplete second and ten, and now listen to this crowd as we take a look at our Chili's lineup with Josh Hypo pulling the trigger and Quentin Griffin, his fine running back, number 22, has scored 13 touchdowns. A host of talented wide receivers. We'll see all of them before long in this game. Jason Glenn, he's the linebacker and the brother of the defensive back with the New York Jets. Michael Jamison, the only veteran back in that secondary against Heifel today. They figure to be under fire against number 14 all game long. 
three wide receivers. Then they send the back out into the formation. And Heifel throws complete to the near sideline. So Fagan makes his first catch of the game for 14 yards. The offensive line of OU, which has done an outstanding job, giving Heifel plenty of time here this season, matched against this Aggie defensive line. And they'll try to come up big. And they're going to sit down often in a four-man defensive line rather than three-man. Coach Stoops on the OU sideline, leading candidate for Coach of the Year. First down for OU on the 26-yard line. Fagan in motion, and they run Griffin. And Griffin is out to the 31-yard line with Cornelius Anthony making the stop. So Josh Heupel, the leading Heisman contender now from Aberdeen, South Dakota, which among other things is the pheasant hunting capital of the world. That has been a very busy stop for a lot of hunters the last couple of weeks. Well, if they can shoot as good as this accuracy from Heifel, they, they're going to get a lot of birds because this guy can put it right in there. Second down and four. It's been all three-man line so far in this game, defensively. Now the corners back off against Heifel. He'll come underneath. Fires complete, short of the first down, and a great tackle by Royland Bradley, the linebacker who drilled the receiver that time. That's the wrecking crew, folks. The wrecking crew is going to have the way they want to win this game with their Dell game solutions for Oklahoma to move the ball. They want to control that front four or front three, whatever it is and force them into a blitz, distribute the ball around to dominate. That's been the game plan. The front four for a must win, and I think they need three turnovers to win this game. Third down and three. Heifel, plenty of time, flares it, Griffin drops it. OU forced a punt. Very different style from Kansas State that I watched the game on the road when OU won that game to this game. So far, Mike Hankwitz, defensive coordinator for Oklahoma for Texas A&M, has been dropping their guys, playing a lot of zone, keeping things in front of them, and taking those great athletes and running up, making the tackle. Mickey Jones is back deep, number 83 for the Aggies. Not enough players on the field for Oklahoma. And Ferguson and OU take a timeout because there were only 10 Sooners on the field. A very big start for the Aggies. Timeout. And Aggie to watch, number 21, Jay Brooks. He's blocked three punts. He's down in a defensive tackle spot between the guard and the center. Ferguson back to punt it. Jones to return it for the Aggies. and blocks his fourth punt of the year. Everybody knew where he was. You called it, Brent. I circled it right there. He comes around a little stunt right up the middle. A little stunt, a little crisscross, confuses the Oklahoma blocking, and he gets it right there in the right arm. Celebration on the sideline, and now the big man checks into the lineup for the Aggies. Keep an eye on Jamar Toombs. He's right to the quarterback's left. They'll motion. Toombs stays back in the backfield. Play fake. Ferris keeps it. That time was Michael Thompson who came off the corner for OU. Made a nice play. Now let's check in with Jack Aru. Brent, one of the reasons why Jay Brooks is blocking so many punts this year versus last year, he said all the other times he was worried about getting injured and used to go for the block with his eyes closed. He said, this year I've opened my eyes, therefore I know where I can put my hands. And he gets a piece of the pigskin more often than not. Second down and 11, can I take advantage of what Brooks just achieved here, though? An early score 
will give the Aggies a quick lift here against the number one team in the nation. Motion in behind. There's Toombs battling, and OU was ready. Marshall among those, along with Corey Callens, number 92. They come up big. And the one thing we're seeing here, Gary, a very fierce hitting OU defense well, right Bobby now. Bobby Stoops made his mark in college football with defense. His brother Mike and Brent Venables right there, the two coordinators, co-defensive coordinators. There's Brent right there. They are running this defense, and it is physical, and it is fast. Now third and 11. Ah. OU holding after the block punt. Fade to the corner, contact, penalty flag thrown. There was contact as Robert Ferguson was hit by Thompson near the goal line. Fade pass to the outside. Thompson's off about six to eight yards. He jams the player, which you can do, but the ball was in the air, so you're going to get pass interference. Half the distance. To the outside, you'll see it. Thompson off. Ball's in the air right now, and Thompson has to jam him, or there will be a completion for a touchdown. Pass interference on the defense. It'll be a spot foul and an automatic first down. Randy Crystal. So the ball is spotted at the two yard line because it was short of that first down, but now it becomes first and goal. Now don't bet against big number five. He'll set up as a fullback. Jamar Toons is in the fullback spot. Short of the goal line, and again, OU was ready. Ramon Richardson, number 91, the first to hit him. OU gets so much credit for their great offense, but this front four, they're making people play, keeping their linebackers free, and they refuse to be blocked. They played decent defense here after the turn, well, basically turnover with the block puck. OU has defended the outside so very well. You wonder if the Aggies won't come right back with power football. But it's going to be a tough option. Ferris touchdown. Aggies strike first. Keeper all in the same point right there. Ferris gets the six points, but he might as well give Jay Brooks at least half of them because he set it up. Brent, that's not counted as a turnover, but basically it was a turnover for AM. Terrence Kitchens adds the extra point. Is that girl here in Aggie Land? <laughs> A 10-point underdog strikes first because of Jay Brooks, who has now blocked four punts this season. Number 21 sets it up. And then the 25-year-old quarterback, the one-time third baseman in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization, takes it in. And the Aggies lead number one by seven. Timeout. College Station in Texas A&M is the site of George Bush, the president's presidential library. He's a big fan of Texas Aggie football. That comes here a lot. Why? Well, he likes to play golf with the head coach of the Texas Aggies. And there's George W. Bush atop the shoulders of our former president of the United States, a good friend of R.C. Slocum, the former president, George Bush. Indeed he is. Savage and Thatcher are back. Deep now for the Sooners and Thatcher looks for a right alley. Out to the 30-yard line and the 12th man comes up and makes the tackle. Eric Stanford, a sophomore from Waco, Texas. And watch Stanford come down the field here. And the young linebacker, a walk-on, part of the great tradition, showing good speed as he catches him from behind. And you can see a snapshot of the 12th man that began in 22. 
Went from the student body to the field. Always wears the number 12 jersey. And our young man today, Eric Stanford. Heupel flares on first down, and the Aggies are all over Josh Norman, the receiver that time. A lot of people are trying to beat this spread offense by hitting the quarterback. That seems to be the game plan. Hit Heupel, hit Heupel, hit Heupel. At least that's what all the experts, so-called experts say. It looks like Hankowitz's design today is, let's sit back and see if Heupel can throw the ball downfield and try to hit the receivers instead of the quarterback. Showing a four-man front, four-down linemen. Pressure blitz, Heupel down the middle, deep, got Norman in a foot race, stumbling down inside the 15-yard line. No one faces a blitz any better than Josh Heupel. 55 yards under enormous pressure with the free safety right in his face. Michael Jamison was there. Coming right down the gut here. Watch the end man. This is the defensive end, but watch, he'll drop. It's actually a zone blitz look. And when you give that quarterback time to throw the ball, Hypo, even though he's got a guy in his face, nobody's more accurate than this guy throwing the ball, Brent. No one in college football. Hypo with a first down in the red zone for the first time today. And he's going to keep firing in zone high incomplete. Second down and 10. Let's take you back to last year, our courtyard by Marriott moment, because it helps set up our storyline today. Heibel ran for a touchdown. He also passed to tight end Trent Smith for a touchdown. Oklahoma 51, Texas A&M 6. The Aggies have not forgotten. That was their worst setback since, well, you got to go way back to the early 1900s when the Baylor Bears put a big time looking on them. Now it is second down and 10. Four wide receivers for Heifel. Going into the closed end of the stadium. Extremely hard to be heard. Heifel lobs. Incomplete. This is probably the toughest end zone in college football for a visiting quarterback. They closed it in here at Kyle Field. You can see how tight it in. Very little chance for Heupel to call an audible. They've got to use silent counts, Gary. They've got to use hand signals. You can see how this field sets up here from our overhead look. This is tough on a QB and wide receivers in a spread. And Heupel tried to audible on that play. He probably went the wrong direction. He had a better situation to the top of the field better than the bottom of the field. Now, Gary, let's see what he can come up with here on third down and 10. Flushed from the pocket in a foot race, throws incomplete, and the 12th man makes it tough on Heupel and the Sooners. They will attempt a field goal. The 12th man and Jason Glenn, the outside linebacker, coming from the backside. These athletes, these outside linebackers, are getting pressure on the quarterback with decent coverage to force Heupel into some bad throws. Now, folks, here's something. Oklahoma's a Nike school, and here's Timmy Duncan. Here's a Nike on the right, folks, but but left-footed, and he's got the Adidas on. Now, here's a young. <laughs> he's going for more endorsements than Tiger Woods, folks. I mean, here it is, a 31-yarder. Got it. Nice answer by Oklahoma. The long pass from Heupel to Norman set it up, but the Sooners settle for a field goal. Texas A&M 7, Oklahoma 3. Here in the first quarter with seven and a half minutes to go and a whole lot of OU fans, or at least those lucky enough to get tickets, have showed up down here in uh, Aggieland in College Station, Texas. Brent, so far the tables have been turned in this game a year ago when Oklahoma was so good, they blocked the first, had a fake punt early to control the game. With the wind that is back, it'll go right out of the end zone. It'll come out of the 20. Reminder, coming up next now, ABC Sports brings you one of the most prestigious events in golf. Tiger Woods and the best from around the globe compete in the World Golf Championship. American Express Championship. Next only on ABC, Tiger Woods five behind Nick Price after Friday's round. First down and 10. Look at this, Brent. Oklahoma will keep 12 guys out on the field waiting for AM to come out of the huddle. Then they'll take one off, whether it's a nickelback or a linebacker. And that time it was the linebacker, Roger Steffen. 
trotting off the field. And the Aggies deploy three wide receivers. Now they motion so that in effect gives them four. Then hand on back to Toombs, and Toombs makes his way to the 24-yard line, and Roy would Roy would yeah, one of the best one, hitting safeties in the college One game. of the triangles of this defense, the two inside linebackers and Williams, high school quarterback, but almost a linebacker type safety is very, very physical. As Josh Heupel, his mom and dad, drove down from Aberdeen, South Dakota. His father, a college coach, Division II. They have a game today. He leaves the game in the hands of the assistants. Second down and a six. And this time, it is the tailback, Richard Whitaker, for a first down. College football on ABC brought to you by Chrysler for reinventing the passion for driving. Chili's, I want my Chili's baby back ribs only at Chili's. Courtyard by Marriott, the hotel designed by business travelers, and Bud Light for that great taste that won't fill you up. Never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. Talking to Steve Craigthorpe, the offensive coordinator for AM, he said you must have misdirection plays to handle the speed at linebacker with Marshall and Thomas. There's Ferris to Whitaker again. He slipped on a cutback. As he came to the hole, slip picked up only about a yard on that play. So Richard Whitaker, the smaller of their running backs, and when they want to go to the power like they did down there by the end zone, big Jamar Toombs becomes the main man. Really impressed with Mark Ferris when you watch him. He is totally poised, very prepared quarterback. I think going playing that baseball has really helped this guy as a quarterback. Like Chris Winkie at Florida State, only three years younger. And a sophomore. Second down. Here's Goins with that end around look. Ferris doesn't look, snaps it off, drop. The ball was dropped by Robert Ferguson. And that had nothing to do with an injured ankle, folks. The hands are not injured. Ferguson, little hitch pass. They're trying to use him as a possession receiver so far in this game. Doesn't quite have the great speed yet. And they'll continue to look at his ankle and knee to make sure he can go deep. Real game break. Real game break potential. Now Gary Mark Ferris telling us when we were chatting that the one thing he wants to do is to avoid the mistake. Third down and nine. Rolls hard to the right. Incomplete. Very interesting defense that time. And, and when you talk to Steve Beckdorf about Mark Ferris, he said he's very good throwing off the run. It's kind of a baseball. He was a high school shortstop and third baseman, but that time Oklahoma sat in a deep zone and had nowhere to throw the ball. Now remember Thatcher was a little deep last time on the punt. It bounced and it rolled down inside the 20. He'll shorten up here a few yards and see if he can't get a crack at this ball in the air. If they close in on him, he go for the fair catch. You can try to bounce it again on him, and they do. And the Aggies will down it inside the 35-yard line, so he's still not close enough. A reminder, huge Saturday next week on ABC. The BCS race is on. Michigan-Ohio State will kick it off at 12 Eastern. Then we'll have regional coverage, and then, folks, plan your Saturday around this one. It's prime time. Florida and Florida State. It doesn't get any better than this one ever anytime whatever year you want the Knowles and the Gators I guarantee you will get it on in Tallahassee if we can clear all the politicians and the vote counters <laughs> out of that town we'll get some hotel room first down for Hypo the Sooners trail it inside handoff Griffin he makes his way to the 39. Well, let's find out about the Purdue Boilermakers in Michigan State. Big one, here's John Saunders. Fred, as you know, if Purdue wins these last two, they are headed to the Rose Bowl. So Michigan State today, Jeff Smoker just goes around, fakes a little pass, and then runs it in unmolested. Excessive celebration, so they do not get the extra point. Six and nothing, Brent. Every time you miss an extra point like that, John, it comes back to haunt you. Second down. Don't and chase it. Seven. Don't chase it. Don't chase that point. Here's Hypo. He's chasing a four point deficit right now. Second and seven. Flares the backs. Down the middle. Caught. And short of a first down, Chris Fagan from Houston. 
Well, you know, we talk about the Heisman. Folks, let's redefine the quarterback award this year. How about the Davey O'Brien Award? That always goes to the best quarterback in the country. There's your three finalists, Breeze, Heupel, and Winky right there, Gary. How about that record right there? That might be the tiebreaker in my book. Third down and one, and they quickly went for the first down to move the chains. A good call by Stoop staff that time. You know, Brent, on that last little short pass from Heupel to Curtis Fagan, it really shows the size of these receivers for Oklahoma. When you look at these guys up close, they're ex-running backs, quarterbacks, and they take those short passes and make it possible to run that third and short. First down and 10. And Heupel bellowing to make himself hurt. He will be hoarse after this game in College Station. Strong. And the receiver slips that time. Damian Mackey goes down after the reception. You know, we had a chance to ask Josh Heupel about the AM defense. Here's what he said. Great athletes across the board. Safety is very active. Good cover corners. You can play man-to-man uh, -man as well as zone coverage. They disguise things very well and play multiple uh, or play a variation of coverages. And he's and facing that here today, Hypel, a student of the game. Someday, regardless of whether he plays on Sunday, he'll make an outstanding coach for someone. On second down, Hypel fires, and he is short of the first down. Fagan makes another catch, and let's check in with Jack Aroot. Brent, one of the reasons why Josh Hypel is such a student of the game is because he's a coach's son. Before Ken Hypel was actually a college coach, he coached high school at Aberdeen, South Dakota. And when Josh was about that age, four years old, he was driving back from a loss by Aberdeen High with his dad. And he said to his dad, Dad, did you know the flats were open all night? And Ken Hypel said, that's when I knew Josh was something special. <laughs> Indeed, Jack. He needs about a 10-yard wide open receiver right now. Third down and nine, and uh, the flags come flying. Going to go against OU down there. Gary, one that of the things I'm noticing about the Aggies is on a reception, they're hitting the receivers quicker than Kansas State oh. did. There's no yards after a catch so far, except Prior in Norman's snap, case. Right. Full start on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty and remain third down. And the reason, Brent, is there's not as much blitzing. More guys are back there facing the quarterback and seeing where the ball is thrown. This is a very interesting defense Mike Hakewitz has here. There's only one defensive lineman on the field. He's playing nose tackle. Everybody else is a linebacker. Just the guy over the center is a defensive lineman. Everybody else are linebackers or DBs. And some of them get down in the three-point. Eiffel is back. Has plenty of time. Can't find anybody. Now he'll try to rush free. Fire. Drop the ball on that far side and look for a moment like Josh Heupel had pulled the rabbit out for a first down, but OU is forced to punt. Three-man rush right out there sitting out. Trent Smith is just standing there. The ball's just slightly low, and Trent Smith uh, should have had it. <laughs> I guess. Three-man rush. There's someone will get open. That will have to be continually mixed up by Hankowitz, a defensive coordinator. Jones back to deep for the Aggies. Remember, they blocked the last punt. It was huge. Jay Brooks is down there in that spot. He's blocked one already today. This time, Ferguson hangs it beautifully. And Jones lets it go on in the end zone. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. That is a 58-yarder. A lot of frustration after having one blocked earlier by the Aggies, which set up a touchdown. Let's remind you now about our Monday night, Sunday night NFL schedule. Raiders Broncos at 9 Eastern. That's on Monday night. And on Sunday night, the Carolina Panthers take on... Oh, let me see. That's the wrong... That's the Jets and the Colts that play uh, let me excuse myself about mentioning the Carolina Panthers I must be thinking about the Carolina Panthers and their fine performance last Sunday because that definitely is not the game Sunday Act night. off St. Louis isn't that you're still your team yeah <laughs> <laughs> only when they win what do you mean I'm a friend. all right first down now here comes the handoff right into the middle of the line well this Oklahoma defense I mean, all of the 
Everybody talks about this Oklahoma offense, and rightly so, the points they're putting up there, but this is a stout defense. You know, and I'm more and more impressed with that front four. They keep the linebackers clean, and they're beating the blocks of that AM front offensive line. Second down and nine. You can see how far they have to go on our first and ten line, brought to you by Quest. That's the yellow line on the TV screen. Ferris keeping it himself to the 23 yard line. So this will be third and long. Ryan Fisher, number 94, out of Arlington, Texas, makes the stop for OU. They are keeping Ferris in third and long. Third so they're and making it tough on him. And, and, and they're a little better, AM, this year in third and long than they were a year ago. They're getting 46%, but third and long against this athletic defense is going to be much tougher. That time also, Brad Torrance Marshall, this guy is a football player, number 10. Keep your eye on number 10 in this situation. He is all over the football field. Aggies need seven. Notice how much quieter that crowd in the end zone is when the Aggies have the football. Front four. Forced to punt. And the front four again broke down the offensive line. Corey Klein, number 93 from Tulsa, makes the play. You have guys, this college football is beginning to rec uh, resemble more and more the NFL. When the front four can dominate, that makes it easier to run all those different secondary package and combos and zone blitzes. That's the guy that harasses the quarterback in front four. Now let's see if he. JT Thatcher gets a crack at it. This punt is dead into the wind. Thatcher's too deep the first two times. As you mentioned, he's not judging the wind. And I think AM is waiting for the quarter to end so they can kick down wind. Exactly. That's exactly what they did. They let the clock run out because they want to get the wind at Cody Skates' back. Timeout, Aggies lead OU 7-3. So now, the Aggies, by waiting for the clock to run out at the end of the first quarter, will have the West Texas Breeze. Smart play by R.C. Slocum. That's what a head coach does. Think ahead and help your team. Thatcher will field this one at the 35-yard line. He's really dangerous. And he is brought down by the punter, Cody Skates. An 18-yard return. But did you see how the punter, that young man right there, took on one of the best return men in the country? He met him right in the hole, ladies and gentlemen. J.T. Thatcher has lost his starting job in the secondary, but he is helping this football team with punt returns. Remember how he changed that Kansas State game, that kickoff return in that game. Now, Oklahoma works toward a more open end of the field here. A little more comfortable as far as the noise is concerned. They're at the AM 37 yard line, and they're bringing a tight end in with three wide receivers off to the left. Heupel is going to throw it back to his tight end this time. And Trent Smith, who dropped that one, hangs on this time and crosses the 35-yard line. One of the oddities of this Oklahoma spread offense, it's not that they don't go, you know, we saw the no huddle. You know, we've seen Florida State, and they, Chris Winkie does the shotgun. But one of the oddities of the Oklahoma offense is the tight end, Trent Smith will always line up to the right side of the formation or whoever the tight end is. This time it's Matt Anderson. Always to the right. Quentin Griffin back in for OU. Second down. Inside shovel passes a beauty. And Griffin breaks for the end zone. No down at the six yard line. What a great play by Heupel. He let the rush man get right on top of him before he flipped it to his running back. Watch this beauty. This is an old run and shoot play. It's always going to go to Griffin. No one else is going to get it. But when he avoided nose, nose tackle that time, Ty Warren to find a better angle that time. And remember, he had to do it left handed was really a brilliant play. And you can see Heifel's coolness in the pocket. You're not. You could bring in 
more B1 bombers and more people, you're not going to rattle Josh Hartman. Now, first and goal. Here's Griffin. Nothing doing this time. Stephen Young was there to hit him. Brian Gamble also coming in on the play. Griffin is only averaging 57 yards rushing the ball, but those little dump passes, like that little shovel pass we saw, is basically a running play. And when you put in his passing yardage, he's a really, really valuable weapon in this offense. Now Hankwitz sends in an extra down lineman here in the shadow of the goal. Heifel can do the quarterback draw if he wants. In trouble. Scampering left and still looking for help. Now fire. Zone. Got it for the touchdown. Curtis Fagan, a seven yard catch. And OU leads it for the first time. I'll tell you, this is a Heisman play. Watch this Flemings, the defensive end first. Heifel has to avoid the rush. Clear shot at the quarterback. Quick beat, boom, right to the outside. Now he keeps his head downfield and he finds a guy to throw to. He's going to throw across his body right to the open guy for the touchdown. What a play. And Tim Duncan adds the extra point. He already kicked a field goal here earlier. So OU leads Texas A&M 10-7. Now, Curtis Fagan with four catches here today. Keeps on working in the end zone until he gets free. Gets bumped makes the catch. OU leads it. Timeout. Well, now the Aggies better sound reveling. They've fallen behind the number one team in the nation for the first time. 10-7. This Oklahoma offense, they are averaging almost 46 points a game. Goings to return the kickoff from the 11-yard line. Breaks free, keeps his balance, and makes it to the 25 on a fine return. Josh Heifel, Gary, is 10 of 16 already for 118 yeah, yards. Yeah, watch the Heisman leader right here. First of all, he gets in the pocket, get waiting for the snap count. He reads the coverage. Then he avoids the pass rush. Now watch this. Watch him direct his receivers. Go the other way. Go against the grain. Then... He delivers the ball and the points. That's why you've got a team that can average those amount of points. Josh Heifel did it all now. Part of the scouting report for the Aggies, Heifel on the scramble can throw off of it, which he just did, going hard to the left. Now Ferris fakes the inside handoff to buy time and misfires on a wide open Robert Ferguson that time. If there's any complaint of Mark Ferris so far, he has not been real accurate throwing the right, ball, Right, when Gary. you talk to Steve Craigthorpe and you ask him, what do you like about this guy? He says he's got great preparation, maturity. He's got football instincts. But the most important thing that's been my theme all year about quarterbacks, you know this, Brent, you've got to deliver the ball to where you're aiming. Accuracy is number one. He's missed his last four. So here is second down and ten. And he ends that right now throwing to Chris Taylor, but nothing Look at doing that now. Defense run. Let's go down and check in with Jack Aru. Jack? Brent, since 1931, one of the A&M traditions is the tradition of Reveille. Now, all the previous Reveilles are buried outside the stadium, and in the past, they were able to see the scoreboard. But now, with the new end zone, they've had to erect a very special doggy scoreboard so the spirit of Reveille can keep up with the score of every A&M game. <laughs> and they, they, <laughs> that's wonderful, yeah. folks. This is a school with some of the Thank great... How right, about that one? Right now, the Reveille dogs, those. they're saying, I want to see all this Throw the ball. Third down now and six. Mark Ferris back in the gun. Greg Porter motions toward the formation underneath. Ferris, though, misfires. He had Porter wide open underneath and threw to the wrong man yeah, that well, time. Ferris is going to have to calm himself down here. Robert Gary. Ferguson slipped and fell that time coming out of his route. Ferguson had a post corner route and he just fell down. That's Bethel Johnson on the other side. So Bethel was wide open, and they come back, and the other receiver slips. 
And here is fourth down. High fair catch is the signal by Thatcher at the 23 yard line. Well, let's take a look at our Aflac trivia quiz here. When was the last time Oklahoma was undefeated during the regular season and then won the national championship? When was the last time that that happened? Remember OU the only team with a chance to do that this year. They're the only undefeated left. Four games to the Orange Bowl. That's what they they have to do. But it will not be easy. Not only do they have this game and if they win it and they can look ahead down the road to Texas Tech, Oklahoma State and Stillwater, Big 12 championship game in Kansas City at night. Not an easy road. First down now for Heifel. Fires underneath. Antoine Savage across the 25, a late penalty flag. So the flag thrown late here on the uh, far side. There's no foul on the play. The pass was behind the line of scrimmage. A jammed Kyle Field in College Station, Texas, saw the Aggies score first. Oklahoma then with a field goal on the board, and a short time ago, Josh Heupel, his first touchdown pass of this game, and OU, the number one team in the nation, leads it 10-7, and now Heupel with a second and six. It's time and incomplete, so it is third down and six. But even though Oklahoma leads overall, Gary, we would give the Aggie defense high marks. High marks. It's the AM offense that's not doing the job, only 43 yards. Hypo, we talked about distributing the ball. There's the guys. Look at that. Spread around. Who are you going to cover if you're Mike Hankowitz? He's got guys and weapons all over the field, and that's not even counting Quentin Griffin, their tailback. Third down and six. Hypo going to run out of it. Now fire back for the first down. Hey, Smith. The tight end on the run. Coach Josh Heupel is dangerous every second he's got the ball in his hand. Coaches it, coaches don't like quarterbacks to throw against the grain, but all the great ones do it. Elway does it. Bob Greasy in his days when he used to scramble does it. If you watch Drew Henson, we saw it. When you're going one way and throw against the grain, you get those receivers wide open. Joe Montana. Oh, Joe Montana was beautiful. Griffin battling for a couple of yards it's into the heart of that Aggie defense. It's dangerous, admittedly, but when you got a senior quarterback, the risk reward, the reward is so big when you throw against the ground. So Josh Heupel, the trigger man of the undefeated Sooners, led that remarkable surge through October. I think one of the great Octobers in the history of college football. Second down now. Drops it off again and it's caught by a receiver going down. Damian Mackey short of the first down. Uh, probably the ugliest ball thrown all year by Hypo. The front four rush. Remember the two outside guys are linebackers. Only two defensive linemen on the field. Hypo wants to deliver, goes up in the pocket. That's pretty good protection by that offensive line and just shot puts it out there. Ordinarily, we would say that's a wounded duck, Not but since Hypo is from Aberdeen, South Dakota, I will say it's a wounded pheasant. <laughs> Third down and five. Straight back. Got time on the run. Short, I believe, of the first down. I believe he was just short of the mark. And let's go quickly to John Saunders for an update on Northwestern. John? Well, Brennan, it's time for the Burger King update. Northwestern, all that offense last week, trying to play some defense this week facing Iowa. Kyle McCann, 12 yards to Khalil Hill. He dives in for the touchdown. And Iowa right now leading Northwestern 13-3. Brent. Well, Gary, you thought it might be a, a letdown by the Wildcats as the chains are being brought out here, and you can see how close they are. 
Yeah, very tough to get up week after week. All the fans think it's so easy. Why not just play your best game? But it happens all over the country. That's why it's so impressive to go on the field. A quick minutes. count, and Hypo can go straight ahead, up under center. And the Aggies know it. Here he comes, and they hit him. Now they pull him back. I don't think he made it. The Aggies were ready for that maneuver. Hypo up under center on a quick count to sneak for it, and Brian Gamble, the inside linebacker from Alto, Texas, says, no way this time. They had run already one short quarterback mistake, uh, quarterback sneak to get a first down, but this time, as Hypo goes high, Gamble puts his helmet right on the number 14 in the face mask. There he is, one guy low, one guy high, and obviously that ball never made it across for the first down. Big play by number 17, Brian Gamble. But now, folks, if you're an Aggie fan, can the offense move the ball as Seth McKinney, big number 77, goes over it. He's the key to this offensive line. And here is Mark Ferris. Hit his first two. Since then, he's been struggling. He's had inside and a big man. Toons explodes for almost nine yards on first down. Heineke, number 89. So if they get him rumbling and running downhill, could get a little tougher. On balance line this time, you see three guys to the left side. All the receivers are out, and they're just gonna give it to Big Jamar. Goes right in there. You got one extra guy to block that time, and Toombs, who's not as big, comes up and makes a big nine-yard game. Second down and two. Ferris to fire. Middle incomplete. And a penalty flag is thrown again as Bethel Johnson. Yeah, Michael Thompson grabbed Bethel Johnson that time. He was beat cleanly. Had to grab him, or it would have been a big, easy play for a touchdown for AM on the post. 15 yard. Penalty here and an automatic first down for the Aggies. Here's where the officials have to be careful of whether the ball was catchable, but I think it would have been. Let me go down back to fourth down, and I realize this is a second guess right now because they didn't make it. Right. But on the road near midfield, up 10-7, would you have been inclined at least to think about trying to punt it inside the 20-yard line? Uh, I, I get to go second like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is your style, the win. Uh, yeah, I, it was so short, and they probably felt so confident. But watch the top of the screen. They're going to get a grab right there. Just as he's beat, his right arm just grabs number nine, Bethel Johnson, and that ball. You see it, Bethel saying, I could have had that one. Mark Ferris looking on his wristband to call the play. Again to the left. Joe Weber is the running back. And here is Weber. Did not surprise Torrance Marshall, number 10, who made the stop. So tonight, Demi Moore tries to be the first woman to join the elite Navy SEALs, the network television premiere. G.I. Jane tonight at 8, 7 Central on ABC. You seen that movie, Gary? I have. Is it a good one? I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> he works for the network. Folks. Oh, I've seen What'd it. What'd you expect? I've seen it. I know what he's on about <laughs> it. Second down and 11. <laughs> Here's that in the round. Chris Taylor spins away, fumbles out of bounds, Aggie football. Ball went out of bounds on the fumble. Well, the Aflac trivia quiz, and I know some Oklahoma fans certainly knew the answer to this one. The last time OU was undefeated during the regular season won the national championship. Folks, you got all the way back, all the way back to 1974. They were 11 and 0. Barry Switzer's second year as head coach in Norman. You would have thought that they would have done that in the 80s right. with some of those great teams. They, 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 were, they lost the game early in 85, I remember, and ended up. But Barry was a young guy back then, wasn't he? Oh, look at him. Oh. Huh? <laughs> 73 the first year, and then the next year, they go all the way and win the national championship. A little bit different style than what we're seeing here today with Josh Heifel, I might add. And uh, 
On third down, the Aggies are 0 for 4. They now face a third and nine. He recovered his own fumble and went right back down on it. Rocky Kalmus that time, number 20, came off the corner, and you're right. Ferris did fumble the ball, but it was Kalmus who came from the outside that time with a five-man rush that really forced the fumble. The two linebackers, you watch films on these guys, and game after game after game, they're on the field and they make plays. Let me tell you about that mishap, folks. That may have taken the Aggies out of field goal range. That was not a small time bobble back there that time because they're going to come up now on fourth down. They need 18 yards. I'm surprised that when it's dead down win, I think they could be kidding. Gets set, fires in zone. Incomplete Oklahoma football. You could see the coverage right down there with Michael Thompson, number 19. Whether you can see it fourth down, downwind, good coverage this time, really nowhere to throw the ball. Seam pass, all four receivers are going to the same spot, two to the right, two to the left, they're just running straight down the field and broken up that time by Michael Thompson. So it'll be Oklahoma's ball, timeout. facility is being provided by the Tostitos tether cam a remote control camera attached to a blimp on a tether some 500 feet above the ground here in College Station Texas Aggieland and now it's Josh Heupel and the powerful OU Sooners back on the attack Griffin the receiver to the 40 yard line so a reminder, our triple header next week coming your way on ABC. Always at Dandy in the Big Ten, Michigan, Ohio State at 12 Eastern. Then regional coverage of these games around the country. And then the big one is next Saturday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Florida, Florida State. Battling to try and get an Orange Bowl spot and perhaps a date with Josh Heupel and OU. Middle. Picked off by Jason Glenn. And Jason Glenn is inside the 35 yard line. Josh Heifel finally got burned. He's backing up. Here's Jason Glenn. Instead of rushing this time, he drops. He's their best pass rusher, but Hankowitz changes it up. And Josh Heupel never sees the drop defensive end. He thinks it's going to be an easy completion to Josh Norman. And Glenn backs up just like Big Brother and gets a pickoff. The Big Brother, Jason, were both high school defensive backs. And then Jason Glenn got too big. And so they moved him to linebacker. He has a wonderful pair of hands for a linebacker and that's not the only pass he has intercepted first down and 10 and now can Ferris and the Aggies do anything completed pass that time to Ferguson Oklahoma is starting to make a few errors right here penalties three had a turnover and they've had a drop ball fortunately they've survived a also a fourth and short at the 50 yard line with good defense that was, I think, Mark Ferris's best play right there, Brandy. Went to his left and just kind of like the baseball player. As you see, the total offense has not been much. The offense has to help the wrecking crew defense. Ferris, snap it off, dropped. Would have had a first down, and the ball was dropped by Ferguson who has now dropped two passes here today and he is supposed to be a big timer. He's a J.C. transfer. He's made some great catches for them this season. Came in with an injured ankle. Right. But it's his hands that are betraying Texas A&M. <laughs> it's always something right. You know Brett he did not practice all week and you start you got to get away from your normal routine and all of a sudden you start worried about your ankle worried about the plays and you forget to do the basics. I think uh, as he limps out there, he's really not 100%. Here. Third and three. The Aggies must reach the 24-yard line. Ferris to throw for it. He's got it underneath this time. First down, 
Robert Ferguson hangs on. And he hung on, but as he turned that time, I think he might have tweaked that ankle a bit because he pounded the ground. Coming in in motion, goes back out a little bit gingerly, catches the ball, but watch his feet give out. And that kind of tweaked it just a bit as he slammed the turf. And they're going to take him out. He'll yeah. come to the sideline right now as Chris honest. Taylor replaces him. But not running badly there as he comes over <laughs> the sideline. First down and 10. Inside the 25-yard line for Ferris and the Aggies. There's that roll again, and this time he throws, complete to Richard Whitaker, the running back. So college football on ABC is brought to you by the rugged New Montana from Pontiac. Life is more exciting in Montana. Discover card, there's always something more to discover. National car rentals, so what are you waiting for? Let's go. And Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. Pretty good changeup by Steve Craigthorpe, the offensive coordinator. Mark Ferris has had trouble throwing the ball from the pocket, so he's had a half roll them a little bit, get him more comfortable. Second down and four. Fake the tombs, option look. And OU not being fooled at all as Kalmus, number 20, came over on Whitaker that time to make the tackle for the loss. You know, that's several times they have gone to the outside, right. Gary, and OU's really jumped Too it. quick. Those two linebackers, I mean, you got to get an offensive lineman on them, and that's what that front four for Oklahoma is doing such a great job. They're getting in there. They're occupying the five offensive linemen for A&M and letting Kalmus and Marshall just run sideline to sideline. Ferguson is back in. This will be a third and seven. The Aggies must reach the 13-yard line for a first down. They don't want to take a big loss. They are definitely in field goal range here if they should fail to make the first. Ferris fires for it incomplete. They want a flag, and they're not going to get it. Great combo coverage to the outside. They played four on three. Dime package for Oklahoma, four guys. Here's the jam here. There's going to be a jam inside, and then these two guys run combo to the outside. Nice package. Jam inside. Play four on three to the outside, and that's good coverage. Just put your arm on them and don't knock them down. For the time, Terrence Kitchens, who is quite a story this year, after having seven kicks blocked a year ago, most of them low, he's 13 of 60. This for the tie. 37 yards. Got it. Number one, Oklahoma 10, Texas A&M 10. Timeout. Brent Aggie kicking specialist Terrence Kitchens, as you alluded to, has solved a problem he had at the end of last year. He had line drive itis. Now he solved it. He uses this and does kickboxing. A friend holds this and he kicks into it. Hey. That again, Jack. That was pretty good. I think RC was going to kick him if he didn't start kicking it higher. <laughs> Terrence Kitchens now kickboxes a line drive this time. He hey, Jack, get out there. <laughs> get him to practice again, fella. Huh? He missed the pad on that one. Kicked the guy right in the navel. Missed that pad completely. Mm, coaches hate to see that on a kickoff, Gary. It looks like we got a little penalty flag, too. Well, of course, that's what it was. Yeah. It's out of bounds, out of bounds. so that's a penalty. Uh, that's why the flag is thrown on the kickoff, so we can uh, just forget about that because he'll come out and just mark the ball. Kick out of bounds. Oklahoma selected the option. And the ball first and 10 on the 35. So a reminder, coming up on the MSN Halftime Report, John and Terry will have scores and highlights from across the country. Plus, Terry discovers why everything old seems new again in Oklahoma. Bob Stoops and former coach Barry Switzer talk about the New York Sooners with Josh Hyper at the trigger. In trouble this time, and a wrecking crew is all over him. Mr. Danielson, you think the Sooners defense is outplaying the wrecking crew? I disagree. Well, I think the wrecking crew's having a good job, but the Sooner AM offense has to step up a little bit. 57 yards. This, Mike Hankwitz is doing a good job changing up his defensive fronts and finally get a sack on Hyper. 
Second down and 13. Underneath. Jamison pounces on it. The wide receiver slip screen. Ball's right there. Bobby Stoops defense is going to have to answer the bell again in this game. Wide guy coming in. Ball's put right there. Fagan catches it. Gets hit. Coughs it up. And Jamison ends up with the football. The fourth time that I can remember, Brent, that AM was going to start their series across the 50 yard line in this game. Ferris now 6 of 14 for 42 yards. Going to pump big fire sideline, got him wide open. Comes to number nine, Bethel Johnson, his best throw of the game. Absolutely. Kitch and go against a two deep safety look. You can't put any air on this one. You gotta throw it hard. A little hitch, a little go, now gun it. Ferris guns it in there before the safety enters the picture, and that's exactly how you have to throw the ball. Because he was a third baseman, I think he throws better going to the left than he has today that's to a his good right. Point. That's a real good point, because first base is to his left, all right? Exactly. Now Ferris rolls right. In a foot race, gets rid of it and gets it complete to Whitaker for the 10 yard line. A salvage job by Mark Ferris. Mark Ferris is obviously getting more comfortable. Steve Craigthorpe did a nice job of getting his confidence back with some short throws, some short rollout throws. There's Steve on the far right side of the camera right there. He's now got a quarterback that feels comfortable in the game, and he showed a little shortstop right there, picking that ball up and just gunning it. Second down and four for the Aggies. They can reach the seven-yard line for a first down, and first and ten is brought to you by Quest. And they pound it for the first down with Big Jamar Toons. Grant, you say Big Jamar Toons, but it's been him getting smaller that has allowed him to be a more effective running back. Folks, like listen to how small smaller is. Right. Tell a him. year ago, <laughs> he went 275. Now he's 255. Still big, but you can see when you look at him, he's a much slimmer looking running back. Somebody will give him a big time shot on Sunday, folks. Time out. Folks, this is what it would be like trying to tackle number five. Look at him coming right at you with those powerful thighs of his driving now to give the Aggies a first and goal just shy of the OU five-yard line. And that was Brandon Everidge, the safety that had to make the tackle. He goes about 185 pounds, having to take on the 255-pound tailback fullback. To the three yard line. The big fellow wants the ball in his hands. You can just tell by his body language. Jagaroo. Well, Gary Danielson, you were talking about the weight loss that Jamar Toombs underwent. R.C. Slocum used the following story to drive home the point. He told Jamar, he said, hey, look, a horse, a thoroughbred horse carries five pounds of weight to handicap him. Imagine with 2,000 pound horse, imagine the difference, Jamar, if he dropped 15 pounds. That's some of my handicapped horses there I just went down. I mean, they jumped all over. Don't remind me of putting the weight in the saddlebags, Jack. You bother me with that story, my friend, as uh, Everage comes in with Kalmus to make the stop for OU. 23 seconds left, to, 21 seconds left in the half. So uh, we've got a, uh, a break right now. Let me remind everybody about uh, Monday Night Football. If you haven't seen the Oakland Raiders, take a look at them. They're stuck in a title, but they're against Brian Greasy and the Denver Broncos Monday night at 9 Eastern time on ABC. 
Third down and goal. The ball is at the four yard line. 23 seconds left here, Mr. Danielson. And the, certainly the Aggies would like a touchdown before the intermission well, yeah. and not just another field yeah, goal. Yeah, they had the block punt, which they scored on. Since then, they've stopped them on fourth down. They've intercepted a pass, and now they've got a fumble recovery, and they have not been able so far to get it in the end zone. It would be a huge touchdown to go in at halftime right here with time winding down. You know, Ferris is, doesn't really give you that option attack against these quick linebackers. I think the best call here is a rollout with a throw, a run pass op, uh, option for Ferris. Third down and goal. Quick snap, end zone. Touchdown, Texas A&M. On a beautiful throw to Robert Ferguson. Well, he's dropped the easy ones and caught the hard one. Did you notice the lack of celebration? Let the students celebrate, and Ferguson came back and just handed the football off. An intelligent young man. And a big timer on that reception. On the offense, touchdown's good. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. RC's pointing over that. He says, that's a student body. I, I think they called it right after he caught the pass, but that was a ridiculous call. Everybody was just coming over to congratulate him. Now they got to back up 15 yards to get this extra point kick. I think he's pointing over there saying, keep the core and the band <laughs> off the field. I don't know if you call it on the band, can you? Well, I suppose you can. <laughs> Students come on the field uh, and illegal little bit of a, that's the trumpet player, folks. Blame, blame him. No question. That was a big time throw and catch that time. Robert Ferguson. Who that was. It, Robert Ferguson struggled earlier. Remember, we talked about him not practicing. He's been yeah. fighting a knee and ankle sprain, but came and went. A great call. Go to your go-to guy and challenge him right you there. You bet. Well, Terrence Kitchens now to attempt uh, this 35-yard extra point. Yep. And uh, did it just get longer or shorter? Did Callens bust it? Everybody's pointing at everyone here. <laughs> and, and we're about 860 yards away, so it's not like we could see it. But you can't beat the price of our ticket, That's Mr. Right. Danielson. That's well, it's going to be against Oklahoma. Defense. It'll be a five yard penalty and remain five. Now, Stoops is saying the center is moving the ball around. That's what he was telling the headlinesman. He said he cannot move the ball. So, let, let, now just watch and see if he moves the ball like that. He, oh, he it. obviously. And no question. Once that ball moves, he obviously moved the ball. Get a jump on it. But it gives Kitchens a uh, 30 yard extra point. And he's got it. Still 19 seconds, and remember Thatcher and the rest of the Sooners know how to return kickoffs. Fade pass for the touchdown to the wide receiver, your go-to guy. Ferris just going to come back, take a quick step, throw the ball to the end zone, and go to your big guy to the outside, and he catches it, gets his foot down. Big-time play, big-time throw. And I wonder if him tossing the ball right there is wet enough. There's the play to the outside. I, I think the band comes on the field. Throws it. Look at Ferguson fight for that ball. Beautiful job. Gets his left foot down as he comes back out. Somehow they get a celebration. I thought he did a good job of not celebrating also. I agreed with you 100%, so I don't know who is it on. Well, let's see what the quarterback uh, did to celebrate. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's good enough. No penalty there. <laughs> that's good enough. <laughs> well, regardless. 17-10 the and nothing happened. Right. And the 12th man, Eric Stanford, who's made one tackle already here today, representing the student body. They'll kick it on the ground to bring seconds off. And a short 
recovered at the 16 yard line. So they keep it out of Thatcher's hands here, Gary, with 17 seconds left. Well, we talked about AM defense needing three turnovers to win this game. They were stopped on downs, fourth and short. Then they had an interception and a fumble. And remember, a blocked punt is just like a turnover, also. Welcome to the land of the wrecking crew. You bet. I mean, Gary Barnett had to resort to threatening to take the Buffalo off a helmet to come in here and win. That was the last team to win in here, Colorado. And Heupel and OU say, let's just get out of here and go in and talk about it. So that'll do it. We've come to the end of the first half. Stoops was very concerned about this game. He confided to his friends and his staff, this will not be easy. And it has not been. 17-10. Down we go to Jack Aru. Jack. Coach, a couple of costly turnovers. Uh, that's it. Uh, we're uh, turnovers on offense and a block punt. And defensively, we played well outside of uh, two third and longs. We've given up two touchdowns on two touchdowns on third and long just by not playing the football. So do you think you got to settle them down a little bit at halftime? Yeah, probably. Uh, you know, as bad as we've played, we're only down seven. So uh, uh, there's no question. Offensively, we just need to calm down and get it going a little bit. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. Folks, call your friends. Dial them up. Number one's in trouble in Aggie Land. Halftime with John Saunders is coming up. This is the MSN halftime report. You can see the protesters still upset at what's going on down in Florida. The confusion, the misunderstanding, the lost ballots. No one knows who's ahead of who. The only question, of course, Terry, is are they Seminoles? Are they Kings or are they Gators? Oklahoma, though, might have something to say about it. Yeah, we just care about football. You know, when Bob Stoops went to Oklahoma, they said he couldn't have a passing attack. One, because he couldn't have a big-time quarterback. He couldn't recruit enough wide receivers and would not be able to deal with the inclement weather of the Midwest. Out there in the land of the wishbone, they called a spread passing attack a Mickey Mouse offense. But hey, Oklahoma, welcome to the wonderful world of Disney. Bob Stoops stood firm. Now he's winning big and everything old seems new again. To me, it's really simple because uh, you have such great tradition that you embrace it and you use it to your advantage. That winning tradition is highlighted by six national championships, including three under Barry Switzer's guidance. But the 1990s brought three coaching changes, NCAA probation and complacency to Norman. Now, under Bob Stoops, those troubles seem like ancient history with the new look, new attitude centers defeating top-ranked Texas, Kansas State, and Nebraska in succession to ignite that old and forgotten winning feeling. I mean, we're getting ready to play Texas, and, and in the locker room, here comes Tony Casillas walks through the locker room saying hello to some guys and wishing them good luck. He's a Lombardi Award winner. And then here comes Brian Bosworth walking through the, to tap a few other guys on the head and say, hey, good luck. He's a two-time Butkus Award winner. And then comes Billy Sims right after them. And uh, so and a Heisman Trophy Award winner. So these are the kind of players that this program, uh, you know, that's, that's what we're about. That's one of the smart things that he did. He brought back and embrace those players and coaches, just not myself, but so many of us that helped contribute to the great tradition that Oklahoma has. What does it mean to have Coach Switzer visually supporting you in this program again and being on the sideline? What does it mean to the does it mean to the program? Our players uh, love seeing Coach Switzer around. We do as coaches. I, I think it shows the also the the confidence we have as a coaching staff that we're not intimidated by by having Coach Switzer around or don't feel that he casts a shadow over us. We're not worried about that. We feel if we we do a good enough job at what we're doing, uh, we'll stand on our own. Just 39 years old, Stoops has padded his resume by working for some of the most respected names in the business. Iowa's Hayden Fry, Bill Snyder at Kansas State, and the University of Florida's Steve Spurrier. Now, he's looking to begin his own legacy, and it starts with a national championship run of his own. I don't know if Oklahoma's the number one team in the country. I've said this without my own opinion, without a doubt, they're the best coach football team I've seen this year. 
If I appreciate those words from anybody, it would be from a guy like Barry Switzer, who knows what a champion is and, and has had a great number of championships, and uh, that means a lot to me. You know something that was great? One of the classiest things that uh, Bob Stoops did was to bring Barry Switzer and his players back into the program. And Barry Switzer told me while I was in Norman that of all the cute offenses in Oklahoma in the nation, Oklahoma has the cutest. But Barry really has to know how to hang around now. When I was at Auburn University, the hardest and most difficult obstacle I had was having a former coach hang around and criticize the way I ran the program. Barry, I know you know how to act. But if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. <laughs> I'm sure he won't right now. He has nothing but good things to say. Although a very tough matchup right now between Oklahoma and Texas A&M. When we are done with football this afternoon, we move on to the World Golf Championship, American Express Championship. For more on that, Mike Tirico. Well, Oklahoma trailing Texas A&M 17-10, and Gary Danielson, what about the Sooners? They're making a lot of mistakes. Well, Bobby Stoops at halftime has to tell his team, we've met the enemy, it is us. They're not doing anything different than what we thought. Let's forget about the score, forget about number one, and just do fundamental football and see if we can win this football game. Well, there is a big development regarding Texas A&M. Let's go quickly to Jack Aru. Jack? Yeah, Brent, their standout sophomore cornerback, Sammy Davis, is out. He has strained ligaments in his left ankle. I talked to R.C. Slocum, and he says it's created a problem. He says he's going to move Jonte Buell, who's a true freshman, over to that position. He's just really going to hurt us. And you hate to lose a candy man right now. He's the best defensive back, and you better believe the Sooners will go to attack as the 12th man, Eric Stanford from Waco, ready to lead the kickoff team down. No you elects to come out. Down at the 12 yard line. And our Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter stats, and Gary, they tell the story. A defensive battle. A defensive battle. Neither team is running the ball very well. Six yards for Oklahoma AM with 21. But it has been the turnovers and points off the turnovers that have kept AM in the game. And now their defense and their fans feel a chance to upset the number one team in the country. OU trailing for the first time at the half this season as Josh Heupel, the leader in the unofficial. Trophy exit polls, if you will, hands it off on first down, and Griffin battles to the 21 yard line. A pickup of eight yards. There you can see that they enter uncharted waters with Coach Stoops on the far side. And that was a big point that RC made to us when we talked to him, Brent, is every game we've seen, they've never been pushed into the fourth quarter. They've run away and won these games. 63 on Texas, 41 on right. Kansas State, 31 on Nebraska, and now in a dogfight. Second down. Griffin. And he is jumped by Royland Bradley, an outside linebacker. The linebacking core from AM has been the difference. Bradley and Glenn are stopping the running game, the two outside linebackers, but they're also putting their hand down and becoming defensive ends when they go to a nickel packet. They have been the players of the game for this wrecking crew defense. Under center, coming out from the noisy end. Third and one, and now Heupel elects to change it up with a hand signal. Got it off. Lobs the fade, incomplete. And a penalty flag is thrown on the play against the defender. Sean Weston, I think, was the guy, number 31, who was in bump and run coverage. He had no idea where the ball was. He never turned around to look. And that's why I think he's going to get called on this pass interference call. If he'd have just jumped and turned, he might have had a chance to get away with it. Pass interference on the defense. Penalty had been forced from the previous spot, 15 yards, automatic, first down. The audible to a fade to the outside, it's going to Curtis Fagan. Now watch Weston, never turns around, never looks, and that's interference. If he'd have jumped and turned, he would have got away with it, and that's the technique he should have used. I think that's a good call. 
So the 15 yard penalty and the automatic first down. The ball comes to the Sooners, 38 yard line. Hypo is really having trouble throwing the ball into the wind so far when he throws it up in the air. Griffin, penalty flag on the play. The umpire made the call, and the umpire usually calls holding. That's what it is. So there's a comparison of our two quarterbacks. Ferris was sluggish throughout most of the first quarter. Then he came on for his best play. Each of them been sacked one time here in this game. And now the ball is being brought back inside the OU 30 yard line. So it's first down and 20 with Mark Ferris waiting his turn on the Aggie sideline. Two linebackers putting their hands down in a four-man rush. The two defensive ends. Inside shovel pass worked in the first half. Works here. Back to the original line of scrimmage with Gamble and Brooks. Now remember, Brooks has to step in there because of the loss of Sammy Davis. And the top-ranked and undefeated Oklahoma Sooners trailing at the half for the first time this year are behind 17-10. Brent, the left-handed Josh Heifel on that one threw it right-handed or pitched it right-handed, whatever one you like, but that was a right-handed pitch on the shovel pass. Second down and 12 for the Sooners. Heifel, middle, dime interception. And the Aggies have the second interception of the game and the third OU turnover. As Terrence Keel, a strong safety from Lufkin, Texas, makes the pick. Risk reward, you throw the ball over the middle. This time Josh Heifel tried to anticipate the throw. He's gonna go with this guy right here, Norman to the outside. As he lets go of the ball just early, he tries to get into this hole to that receiver, and the ball goes there just a little bit before the receiver. Keel and Glenn with interceptions. Jamison with a fumble recovery. They also blocked a punt. First down for the Aggies and two. A fourth down stop, a blocked punt, and now Toombs. Jarum with Jamar. And right now the pit, the offensive line, those guys are running that fast. Defensive front seven of Oklahoma right past the big man and a first down. There's all the problems Oklahoma has encountered here today in noisy College Station. First and 10. Short drop, Ferris snaps it off. Complete to Chris Taylor, who crosses the 30-yard line. 12 more yards, and the Aggies are rolling. Mark Ferris absolutely looks comfortable. One of the things he said about being a baseball player he learned was, you learn to ex not accept failure, but deal with failure. Early in this game, he went like 0 for 2, but he just got back up to bat and said, I'll just deal with it, and I'll get my rhythm back, and he has. Derek Strait, the OU corner, shaken up on the play. So he's receiving some attention on the field. And we check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Brent, back in September of 1998, Mark Ferris came home from a baseball game, settled into his easy chair, and turned down the kickoff classic. He watched A&M play Florida State. And what he remarked was the fact that there was an old quarterback playing for Florida State named Chris Winkie, a refugee from baseball. That just pushed him over the edge, says Mark. He decided to forsake baseball as well, called up R.C. Slocum, and he said, Coach, is there a scholarship still available? There was. Well, Jack, the substitution, Thatcher back into the defensive backfield, and Toombs plowing ahead for a couple of yards with Kalmus and Callens 
making the stop. And uh, as Gary Danielson told you earlier in the game, Thatcher had lost his starting job, and uh, he was sent very briefly onto the field as Straight now has returned. Second down and eight. Eleven minutes in the third quarter. Harris gets time, fires wide open. And down at the five yard line, Robert Ferguson forward progress is stopped, and he was wide open for 23 yards. Oklahoma is playing a deep zone, two safeties. But the corners are not getting a jam. This guy has to jam this receiver, so this safety has time. Watch, to the outside, no jam. The safety doesn't have time to get there, and Ferris puts it in between one zone and the other zone, a perfect strike. Mark Ferris likes that coverage. He's been seeing it all game. He's thrown two great. Tunes is off to Ferris's right. Here's Toons. Still battling. To almost the two yard line before he is stopped by the Sooners. Thomas and Marshall, their two All American linebackers, making the stop. Next AM has been using this unbalanced line, bringing a receiver in motion and then just running a very simple play, a zone play back into the unbalanced line. Oklahoma's been handling it okay. But it's giving AM some options to throw the ball off the same formation. RC Slocum sends Richard Whitaker into the game. So he'll line up in the tailback spot right behind Toombs. Now, the last time they did this, Toombs still got the call. Ferris in zone. And he was stopped short of it. Stopped short as Roy Williams comes up to help Kalmus. That was the same option keep play that Ferris scored earlier in the game on. You fake it to Toombs and then follow Toombs right into the hole. Now the whole crowd is saying, Toombs. That's who they want the ball to go. This would be a tough, tough decision for the Aggies if they come up a few inches short here. It is third and goal from inside the one-yard line. Toombs is at tailback now. Got their own scoreboard and everything. You know exactly what the score is. Josh Hypo will have to rally the Sooners if they are indeed to maintain that lofty number one status. They'll need to pull it out now with Terrence Kitchens for the extra point. So the third Oklahoma turnover of this game. Keel with the pick. And the Aggies drive down for the touchdown. Jamar Toombs to the end zone. 24-10 timeout. Exciting times for the Big 12. We welcome their commissioner, Kevin Weiberg. Kevin, what a big day this is for the conference, not just this game. It has been a good day for us, and, uh, you know, it's not often that you have two such highly rated games going on in terms of four rated teams, and uh, we're really excited about the day. How do you feel about the possibility here as we watch the kickoff of Oklahoma perhaps being upset, Kevin? What does that do to the bowl plans of the Big 12? Well, it's really too early to say. You know, the great thing about college football is that um, every game has great significance, and uh, it's hard to, it would be hard to say what an Oklahoma loss would mean for us here in terms of BCS standing because there's so many games left to be played our championship game still even being somewhat up in the air in terms of who might be a participant in it. Are you a fan of the BCS and how it ranks the teams or do you have some qualms about well, it. Well, I think I absolutely have to be a fan of it. I had an opportunity to participate in the creation of it as as did the other contract commissioners of the bowl championship series. So 
you know, we've been supportive of it. We're part of it, and uh, we think it's a good thing. We'll stick right here with Gary and me now as we watch Josh Heupel, who has really been battling this crowd noise here, Gary. Absolutely. It's really limited the offense, and Heupel's so good at reading the defense and changing the play. And Griffin somehow comes out of there just shy of the 25. Jamison making the stop. Kevin, the crowd here today, and uh, actually throughout the conference this year, it has added, I think, so much powerful attention when OU gets on a run back there in Norman and everything. Well, it certainly helps when you have those kind of programs that have a history of national championship success rising back up. And we did set an attendance record last year for the conference. I think we have a great chance again this year. Second down and five. Now Heifel backs it out. Eight seconds. Gets it off. Flush. Jamison on him. Throws incomplete. And uh, Gary, he's being harassed in this game. Pretty good. He really is. Now Josh Heifel does a good job of throwing off his back foot. But what AM is doing is rushing them with one guy, but not totally blitzing, so he has easy throws off his back foot. He still has to be accurate with pressure. One guy comes from the secondary, but they're still playing zone behind it. And when he throws off that back foot into the wind, there's still defenders watching the throw. And Gary is two for his last five, and he's thrown two interceptions. Now third down. They need five yards to keep it going. They're forced to punt. Oh, you tried to run a pick play to the outside for Quinton Griffin, but the AM defense slipped it, and Revelry likes that defense. <laughs> Come on, lads. <laughs> Who let the dogs out, huh? <laughs> it does have some significance here. Yep. Not some of those other places where we hear it all the time, huh? Fourth down now in the Aggies. Remember, they have blocked the punt today. Jones is back deep. Great punt. Here's Jones from the 25. Looking for the sideline and not going to get it. So Kevin Weiberg will stick right here with us. We had a four-yard return on that. We got a timeout, and the Aggies lead it. Timeout. So first down after the Oklahoma punt, it is 24 to 10. Oklahoma has surrendered 21 unanswered points to Texas A&M. And here is Toombs. Ferguson has been an interesting story, Gary. He really has. Remember, injured a week ago after he went for 100 yards against Oklahoma State. Started out very slowly, couldn't find the handle catching the ball, but then all of a sudden gets comfortable in the game, scored a touchdown, and sets up the last touchdown for AL. Second down and eight for the Aggies. In big games, you think players, not plays, and that's exactly what Steve Kreckthorpe has done. He's gone to his player. Foot race, and he's got the first down. Greg Porter, the baseball player here at Texas A&M, for 14 yards. Kevin, I want to ask you, what does this do? Let's say that Oklahoma does lose this game. What does this do for the uh, the race in the South now in the Big 12? Well, it sets up a great race the rest of the way because we would have three one-loss teams in the conference with uh, Texas and Texas A&M yet to play their traditional Thanksgiving weekend game, which will be, of course, Friday on ABC and. Uh, a terrific matchup that will have a lot to say then about our our South Division championship and would put a and in a position to control their own destiny. We want to thank you for the promo commission. <laughs> we'll be here. Right? <laughs> I hope you guys are there. Yeah, absolutely. And Austin, we would miss that one. First down and 10. And here is Toons. And speaking of big ones, let's check in with John Saunders on the Purdue Boilermakers. John. Well, friend, as you know, with Northwestern losing right now, Purdue has a chance to clinch the Rose Bowl. Drew Brees to Vinnie Sutherland, 68 yards it covers, and Purdue back in the game now, trailing 15-10. We'll keep you up to date. Brent. 
Yeah, you know, you wouldn't want to bet against those Boilermakers, Mr. No, Daniels, and your Drew, alma mater. Drew Brees, Josh Heupel, the two front runners, but right now, Chris Winkie looks like it's a pretty good afternoon for him because he's in the thick of it also. He get 700 yards in this <laughs> week. Second down and 12, and Ferris with a nice play fake goes high though that time, and it will be third down and long. Kevin, speaking of the Big 12 championship game, and this year for the first time going outside to Kansas City, a night game. Was there any discussion about the weather at all at night and that sort of thing? Well, there has been a lot of discussion about it. Our athletic directors really felt that the ability to be in the larger stadium, in Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, was important for us. The ticket demand for the game has been great, but you're right, we do run a, a real weather risk in an outdoor facility, and uh, we're just going to have to see how that works as we think about future sites. Oh, it'll be a great scene in there, no matter if it's not. Nebraska or Kansas State. No I big deal. I played in Cleveland at night in January and <laughs> December. You can handle it. <laughs> Third down and 12. Fires intercepted. There's his first interception of the game. Michael Thompson gives OU a life here. Michael Thompson really read this play and beat the receiver to the spot. Thompson playing off this time. Just reads the play all the way He's off. Plenty of room to look at the quarterback, read the play. He knows it's going to be a post, and he just beats the receiver to the spot. The quarterback has to depend on that receiver to get in front of the defender on that play. He's anticipating the throw. So now OU comes out, and they get a big chance here. If they can convert this, they are right back in the thick of things with the fourth quarter still ahead of us. Inside handoff to Griffin who breaks free. Just short of the 50. And let me remind you now of what we got coming up in the pros because with an eight and one record, the Raiders take on the Broncos. That's nine Eastern time. Then Sunday night on ESPN in the tough AFC East, it is the Jets and the Colts at 8.30 Eastern time on ESPN. Second down and three. Hypo quick pass to the outside. They get the first down, put it in the hands of Antoine Savage. So they're on the move here, Gary. And the AM defense has done a nice job, only have allowed one big play, the long pass to Josh Norman all of it in the first quarter. But since then, AM defense has been forcing Hypo to throw the ball underneath. And proving if they can move the chains all the way down. Mike Hankwitz, a brilliant game plan. And Brent, he told us they're more familiar with this offense having faced it last year. And Heupel is eyeing that freshman corner over there several times. He'll come with the, the running play with Griffin. Well, it's football on ABC is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments, use the power of Pacific Life. Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular, and Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Move your money, get well connected. The freshman defensive back, number 26, is now being asked to cover Andre Wolfolk off to Heupel's left. Sammy Davis out with an injury. And Heupel looking, couldn't find him, and now throws underneath. First down, OU coming to a secondary receiver, Matt Anderson, the tight end. And that was some pickup by Heupel. I really love quarterbacks that handle adversity. Coming across this time, you got a guy that's thrown an interception over the middle. He's made mistakes, but what does he do? Runs out again and says, hey, if we're going to move the ball, i got to throw it. I'm the only one that can do it. I'm going to have to live with some mistakes if we're going to get back in this game. Heupel now has driven to the Aggies 30-yard line. And checks the play. Gets the call, cuts back, and the Aggies wrecking crew is ready with Ronald Flemons, number 99, from San Antonio. And a reminder that at the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Second down and 10. They need Mr. Duncan. OU, of course, would like a touchdown. 
Trailing here by 14. Time running down the third quarter. They'd like to get seven instead of three. Blitz look here, and Josh is changing the play. Here, here they come. Hypo the lob at middle. Inside the 10 yard line by Antoine Savage. Gary, I'll repeat it. No quarterback I've seen this year is better in the face of a blitz than Josh Heupel. That for 22 yards. Well, Brent, this was very simple to read. Look at there's no one back here, nobody back into the top. Heupel changes it, gets the post, same play that he called against Nebraska. You throw it up. Now, watch the receiver shield, 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 catch the ball. Perfect job. Just put it up safely where your guy can get it. First down and goal from the Aggies eight yard line. This guy is very difficult to blitz. Eiffel waits for someone to break free. Incomplete intended for Andre Wolfo, number 17, and they were going to work on Yante Bull. Yante Buell, number 26, the freshman defensive back who has been forced in because of the injury to Sammy Davis. I really think there was holding in the secondary that time by the defensive backs from AM. Not the player he was throwing to, but somebody else just outside of the picture. <laughs> Coaches checking the clock. Checking the score, checking the all of the different plays available to him. Holding on the defense. The hold occurred on an eligible receiver. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. That was a first down because the ball was in the air. The quarterback threw it. Had he been sacked back there, it would not have been an automatic first down. First down and goal just inside the five-yard line. Quinton Griffin. They fake it to him. Heifel's going to throw it. Incomplete. <laughs> the guy doesn't look like he hears one thing out here, does it? I mean, calm, thinking, always thinking forward, never thinking about your mistakes, but thinking about the next play. Second down, the son of a coach from Aberdeen, South Dakota. And there, with his arms folded, is Mr. Heibel. So Ken's team is playing today, and he's not stuck in the sideline up there in the Dakotas. Second down and goal. Now Heibel. Forced to throw it. The crowd wants grounding. Hit on the release. And it'll be third down. Again, I'm really impressed with AM. They're not giving Josh any easy throws. They're sitting in catch zones and they're covering everyone and forcing Heifel to make a perfect throw for a touchdown. Number 23, Jason Glenn is a big time college linebacker. Aaron Glenn's younger brother. And he's big timer. He's had one interception already today. The crowd making it tough on Heupel, as tough as they can. Third down and goal. He's got him up here if he wants to bump him on. They run in that direction with the wide receiver. A penalty flag is thrown. And yeah, we're going to get holding on that pulling guard, whoever it was. I think it was Howard Duncan, number 68, who was trying to spring that sweet play. Is it Frank Romero or Howard Duncan? One of the two, the tackle or the guard to that side. You'll be able to check it out on the run it by Josh Norman. Romero, number 63, that just grabs his guy and won't let his linebacker, Bradley, turn around and make the play. And Bradley has played very well here today. And uh, that's certainly one way to stop him from making another play is they're running it in that direction. A tough penalty for Oklahoma. Brings the ball back to the 17 yard line. It'll be third down and goal. So if they miss here from this spot, they'll go for the field goal. And him sets in the zone. The crowd.
crowd rocking. Here's Hyper. Going to throw short and see what they got with Savage. Nothing doing. Down at the 10 yard line, Antoine Savage. And he is tackled by Evan Peroni. I really think without the penalty, Oklahoma would have used four down territory and tried to get the, touch, get the touchdown. But now, I think the better job is to put three points up there. You still got a long fourth quarter. And Brent, we saw last week and the week before, those fourth quarters can go on forever. Take the points. 27 yarder, Patrick Fletcher is the holder. He's got it. Well, Commissioner, I want to thank you a lot for dropping by. Good luck the rest of the way with the Big 12. It's really been exciting. Thanks, Brad. You guys do a great job. For and Thomas more's football. ahead of us. 24-13. The Aggies lead it. Timeout. 24-13. Oklahoma to kick it off after the field goal by Duncan. Goins and Harris back deep for the Aggies. Here's Harris. Drops the ball. Loose. Falls on it, but just about the 10 yard line. And we check in with John Saunders on a Northwestern update. Well, Brent, they're trying to stay alive for this Rose Bowl race, but it's tough against Iowa today. Zach Kustock to John Schweigert. He takes it in for the touchdown. Northwestern back in this one, but time is running out. As you can see, just about two minutes left. Brent. All right, John. This is the worst starting field position of the afternoon for the Aggies. Mark Ferris faces some anxious minutes now. The Aggies need the first downs. Keep the ball away from Hypo. The down with the big fella for a couple of yards. See how dangerous it is where they have to go that yellow line on your screen. That's the first and ten line. That's brought to you by Pacific Light. Oklahoma trying to seal them up down here, force them to punt right away, get it back, get some field position, and drive toward that more open end of the field. There's second down and eight. As the receiver and the quarterback were uh, not on the same page that time, and young Cameron Ferris is watching Daddy from the <laughs> sideline. Come on, Daddy, make make a play if you can here. This is uh, the third down, and uh, we asked Mark, uh, "What's it like when you go home to your daughter?" Here's what he said: oh, "She doesn't care about football. You know, I'm just her dad, and that, you know that's what's great about it to me. Uh, I can have a bad game or a bad practice or a bad week, and you know it doesn't matter to her. I'm still going to be her dad." And, that's what makes it special for me is that, you know, it takes a little pressure off, I think. Yes, Mark, but Cameron says get the first down, Daddy. Going long, got an open man, and he overthrew Bethel Johnson. The defender had slipped, folks. That might have been, might have been a TD. There was angle help coming from the safety on that. Very difficult. One of the unknown things about throwing downwind, it's hard to judge that wind. It's like, like playing golf. You see a straight fall down, and this ball just blows away from the receiver that time, and he misses a big chance to gain big yards on that play first. He missed his last four now, and uh, here comes Cody Skates. Trying to drive it out, and Thatcher looking for field position. It'll be a short field for Heupel. He'll work from the Aggies' 42-yard line, a 38-yard punt with an 8-yard return. So that's only a net of 30 yards here, and there's still a lot of drama left to unfold. We're in College Station, Texas. More than 80,000 on hand. Number one, unbeaten and needing to stay unbeaten to hold that number one position in all the polls trailing right now 24 13 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter Josh Heupel and the Sooners ready to go back to work Heupel keeps it on the run down at the 33 yard line 
very close to a first down. Terrence Keel making the stop. Heupel was expecting a defensive end to come up field so he could pitch it, a shovel pitch to Josh Norman. Nobody was there, so just Heupel just had to run it. And the fourth corner is going to start with Oklahoma in a position to put more points on the board. So we come to the end of the third quarter. And we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You know, Gary, Mark Ferris went through a sluggish period in the first half. He's got to study himself again in this game. And really, it happened once. Remember how it changed. Steve Kreckler gave him a little rollout, gave him some easy passes. I look for them to start the same thing again in the fourth quarter. Heupel and OU. Second down and two for the top rank, the Blitz. In the round, and they caught the Blitz. Off that open corner, first down. Curtis Fagan from Houston, Texas, coming around, and the blitzing linebacker, Jay Brooks, was caught up in the traffic, 13 yards. Let's give a little salute to this offensive line this time. They pick up the blitz, they're gonna hand it, and they just wall it inside. Heupel gets one push, and then he gets out in front and gets in front of somebody else and gets a kind of a knee block again. Folks, that was two blocks from Heifel. <laughs> First, he got the blitzer, pushed him out of the way. Yep. Then he went back outside. First down and 10 now. Pushing a block. And here comes Griffin, squirts into the secondary end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma! Distribute the ball, receivers, tight ends, and this time hand it to the running back right there. Everybody's thinking wide, flow goes one way. The little guy comes out the other way, and Griffin takes it right into the end zone again. Jamison, who had intercepted a pass, missed the tackle that time in the secondary. We got a timeout. The Sooners are right back in it. The Griffins, a very happy mom because her son just reeled off a big time run for the unbeaten Sooners. And now, uh, Mr. Danielson, you're not so sure that they should go for two, no, and I, I think it's a lot. It's to a lot, I know. But here's my thinking on this if you don't make it and AM kicks a field goal, then you're down by eight. I prefer to make it a four point game, and then you still got a long time to go. I prefer to make it a three against oh, this nice. defense in that's case nice. I need the field goal. <laughs> the wind is at my back. Anyway, here it comes. Here's Heifel. Got time. Looking open. Man, got him. I prefer to go for two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was Matt Anderson, the tight end. I'm just a one-point guy, you know. One at a time. One at a time. 24-21. Roll out to the outside. Going to end up getting the tight end right here as he comes across the field. Heifel just buys time, buys time, and says, help me, find somebody. Somebody get in the open, and there he is. He, I don't even know if he was throwing to him, to tell you the truth. I think he was throwing to the back of the end zone that time to Curtis Fagan. And Ken Heifel said we taught Josh well. Let's check in now with Jack Aroot. Well, Brett, now the burden will be put upon the defense of the Sooners. They need to get the ball back. No big surprise, though, that Bob Stoops is a big-time guy on defense. Why? Well, he goes all the way back. He traces his roots back to Iowa. Whereas an Iowa Hawkeye, watch number 41, interception. That's Bob Stoops. They say he was the hardest hitter among the Iowa defensive backs. Finished his career with 205 total tackles, 10 interceptions. A much younger Bobby Stoops then. And his brother, of course, with the co-defensive coordinator, along with Venables. Was a defensive coordinator for Spurrier down in Florida when they won the national championship. And with the wind at his back, Duncan kicks it deep in the end zone, and it'll come out on the 20-yard line. Now, the storyline of this game is quite clear. Mark Ferris and the Aggie offense 
have to do something here. They've got to get some first downs. You can see by quarter how this game has gone. Yeah, well, Oklahoma is the only team that had the ball in the fourth quarter, but AM has only run the ball in this game for 41 yards. There's Mike Mangino, offensive coordinator, setting up the next series, and the running game has been more important for Oklahoma in the second half. They've run for 65 yards. Short drop and a throw incomplete, and they are yelling at the officials on that far side. They are absolutely livid. Stoops is on the field. He said there was 12 men on the field. He must have brought a 12th man out late. He is livid. Well, what it was was they broke the huddle with 12 men, and that's what he thought. It's an automatic call. When 12 men break the huddle, even if you only end up with 11, it's an automatic penalty. And Bobby's right. The linesman is now rushing over to confer from the uh, 12th side, and uh, of course that is a rule. And uh, now he will go over to confer with uh, those. The Stoops brothers are right there. Now you, now you see the headband. An AM player left the field late, and the only thing I can think of is the official saying he never got to the huddle. Mike, don't let Mike get in there. That's Mike, brother Mike right there. Deep court defensive coordinator. He's maybe has more fire than his brother. <laughs> Hawkeyes from Boardman, Ohio, right? Ohio boys. Just going to talk about Bob Stoots. Stoots' his team being a reflection of his poised confidence. <laughs> he's acting like one of his buddies, Bobo Mancini, right now. Or he's looking like the guy you just got done working for, Steve Spurrier. <laughs> You lip readers know exactly what he's saying. I don't have to interpret. And on the other side, folks, calmness, stability. <laughs> and when are we going to get a first down is what he's wondering. We talked about the jam to the outside. This time, the corner gets the jam, and that open area where the ball is thrown can't be completed. You want to get on the somewhat surprised that the argument lasted that long to tell you the truth the way OU was playing and they got him in second and ten man I want to line up and try to come at me again here's the Whitaker breaks free still going to the 35 a first down before Marshall could bring Richard Whitaker down on a fine run his best of the day ran right through Roger Stephan number nine right here is going to miss the tackle breakdown in this defense a lot of motion Kalmus gets blocked but there's the linebacker right in the hole you depend on that guy to make the play that's an excellent run that time by Richard Whitaker the freshman for the first down ball at the Aggies 34 yard line First down, Ferris is going to throw it. Man, beautiful catch on the near sideline as Mark Ferris hits Ferguson, and he showed you his skill for 29 yards. Folks, remember that play. That could be one of the biggest plays of the season in college football. This is some grab. Huge, great coverage on the play by Ante Jones right here. Now watch this throw right there. And up and get it right over the inside shoulder, catch and throw, just exactly how you teach it, coach it, and execute it. Ferguson trots off. Two big plays, one in the running game and one by Ferris and Ferguson to move the chains again. Goins is in the slot, comes in motion. Coming back around on the end around, it's going to be Goins looking daylight. 35 yard line and the coach I believe went flying that time as he did on the uh, near sideline RC Slocum went down <laughs> Got a smile and I could have avoided it 
That play looked open. When it first got the ball, it looked like he might have 10, 12, 15 yards, but that Oklahoma defense runs so well. Just like the wrecking crew, great athletes on defense. Second down and six. Ball to 32, and Ferris backs him up into the shotgun. He's going to throw it. Far side, Goins drops it. Goins defended by Jones, and it's incomplete. And now it will be third down. Oh, we heard from Kevin Weiberg, the commissioner of the Big 12. A very busy day. Missouri at the half winning. Texas Tech up. Texas coming back in the second half of the season. Colorado scoreless against Iowa State. And later, the other big one, Nebraska at Kansas State. Chris Sims is playing in that Kansas game also today. Texas against Kansas after White injury. Here is a big third down for both teams. Five wideouts. Just gotten the first down. Ferris put it down. The linesman will spot it, and then they will measure for it. You could tell from the yellow line that his knees came down just in front of it. But it looks from the yellow line that he might be a football short, but it's going to be one of those calls. Let's see if the yellow line matches up with the actual line. It looked like he was about a foot and a half short. Now you can see how much they need. But and that first and ten line is brought to you by Pacific Life. And isn't that a good uh, aid for fans at home? Don't Great we all like that? Great perspective on the field. About a football short. Now, fourth down, you got to go here, right, Gary? I, I think you do. You're kicking into You're, the wind. And you've got tombs. And you've got tombs. And remember, the quarterback sneak by Oklahoma didn't work. I think I give it to the big guy, tombs. Tombs on the field, number five. He drops back out with Ferris. You can see him on the left side of your screen. In this situation, they put tombs in the tailback position to hand him the ball. Now the challenge is to that offensive line. Don't give any penetration to allow the outside guys to come around the back end to make the tackle. Don't jump to the snap count either. So a couple of tight ends you can see down there. Seth McKinney, number 77, is a very good offensive center. Oklahoma in a tight goal line. Here's Toons for the first down. Breaks free. Still on his feet. Toons still badly. Toons. Toons. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Touchdown. You talk about a tombstone. 27 yards. looking for a football they get a football field and six points tombs who plays big in big games 86 against kansas state carries across the whole oklahoma defense for a tremendous run brent saw him do it against nebraska in 98 110 yards last year against texas he put up 126 yards he comes to play in big games today he has been huge. And there's going to be a celebration penalty here again. One of the most exciting plays I've seen in a long time. Uh, running back. That was remarkable. Carrying defenders and, and into lost, the end zone. And he almost lost his balance. Remember, this is a big guy. 255, 60 pounds, and he keeps his balance. So this will be a 35-yard extra point attempt and he's got it Terrence Kitchens adds another one the Aggies love it and you gotta love a young man Toombs he's had a little problem with marijuana in his background with alcohol in his background but he straightened out his life and ladies and gentlemen this run is worth a couple of million when you go to play on Sunday afternoon the balance the power the determination, the package you love.
Jamar's mother enjoying every moment of it. Aggies lead it by 10, but a lot of time left for Josh Heupel. Timeout. Texas A&M has scored a touchdown in every quarter here today against Oklahoma. They lead it by 10. 13 minutes and 36 seconds left with Mackey and Savage back deep. And because the kickoff's into the wind, OU figures to get a return. Mackey. Down at the 22-yard line. Folks, here's what it sounded like on Texas A&M radio just moments ago. Static there, folks, but I think you get the idea. It was plenty of sight. Look at the size of that guy's neck. Woo, what a package. Third down and 13 27 to go here for Josh Heupel. Here's Griffin searching daylight, and Griffin comes right back to the 31 yard line. You know, Gary, there is absolutely plenty of time oh, to yeah. go, but I want to ask you a question now about Josh Heupel. You said Ferris was having trouble throwing with the wind in his back. What have you seen about Heupel? Well, Heupel hasn't had much chance throwing with the wind. It is harder to throw the fade pass with the wind than it is into the wind. They're not going to make any difference. Josh has no choice but to throw the ball and dart it the rest of this game. Throw at people. Don't lay it up a lot. Second down and one. He's got the bubble screen down here. Got Griffin again. Trying to battle for the first down, and he's got it. A little reminder that uh, next Saturday, we've got a triple header, Michigan, Ohio State. Northwestern and Purdue both lose, folks. That becomes a huge game in the Big Ten. And then we've got regional activity, and then the main event. 8 Eastern next Saturday, Florida, Florida State. Talent, speed, power, you'll see it all in that baby. Hypo fires on first down to Savage, who's at the 36-yard line. Had to battle for just a yard or two that time with uh, Flemons hanging on. Nice play by number 99. Yeah, that time, the play was open the, the time before. And this time, Mangione and Chuck Long, the two call play callers for Oklahoma, came back to it, and the A&M defense shifted. There's Mark Mangione right there, calling the plays along with the help of Chuck Long, the quarterback coach. Second and nine. That left defensive end may have broken as Heupel Got through him on the outside. He's at the scrimmage line, crosses it, keeps it, <laughs> and then steps out at the first down marker. What a slick run by Josh Heupel. And we've got an injured Aggie down on the field here at the 25-yard line already. The Aggies have lost Sammy Davis, now his high school running mate, and uh, an outstanding linebacker, Jason Glenn is down here. He has already come up with big interception in this game. This would be a terrible blow to uh, to the Aggies. A reminder that coming up next, one of the most prestigious events in golf, the American Express Championship, the World Golf Championships, and all eyes will be on Tiger Woods. Uh, we'll take a break. Reveille says, come on, let's get Jason healthy. Time out. Eleven forty-three to go. Undefeated and number one ranked Oklahoma trailing Texas AM by ten as Josh Heifel fires first down at the Aggie forty-one yard line. Savage's helmet comes off after a fourteen yard gain. One more look at Jason Glenn. He's out here playing defensive end. He gets a great start, but Scott Kepenick gets him hit just and watch that right leg buckle underneath him. Right at the end of the play right there. 
And that's why Jason Glenn is no longer in the game. The ball at the Aggie 41. Hypo. Pressure to the right. Going to take it out of bounds for a loss as Flemons went hard after him and the OU sideline wanted a penalty flag, but Flemons made contact before he was out of bounds. So here at Kyle Field, it is the largest crowd to ever watch a football game in the state of Texas. With Jack Aroot and Gary Danielson, I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along with us as you look down on this great scene here. Kyle Field, the home of the 12th man. Second and 12 for Josh Heupel. The unofficial leader in the exit polls for the Heisman Trophy. And on second down, he'll throw it in underneath. And the Aggies jump the tight end, Trent Smith. And Jason Glenn, who was injured on the play. Jack Aroot, what's the latest? Well, Brett, the preliminary indication from the athletic trainer is that it is a sprained knee. They're going to continue to evaluate it. They have said they have not totally removed him from the game. They hope to patch him up and get him back in later. I find that a little hard to believe. <laughs> Jack, they need him. They've already lost Sammy Davis from the corner. Jason Glenn. That's two playmakers. Josh Heupel trying to take advantage now. Glenn over on the sideline. Here's third down and 10. A huge play for both sides. A three-man rush. Heupel fires near side out of bounds, I believe, or did he catch it? They mark it that he caught it. He was in the air for the first down. This is some play by Antoine Savage. The Big 12 freshman of the year in 1999. It looked to me like he dropped his back leg back as he caught it. Up in the air, just taps oh, down his left play. What a beautiful catch. play. What a beautiful play. His left foot, he goes up, has the presence to know he's close, concentrates at two things, and gets the left toe down. Perfect. Beautiful. First down. Inside the 30-yard line. Eiffel on a fake slips down. <laughs> Gain of about a yard. And let's check in with John Saunders on Purdue, Michigan State. Brent, time for the Burger King play of the day. Purdue looks like they're going to have to wait until next week to clinch the Rose Bowl. Little John Flowers here loses a shoe and still busts it for 48 yards in the touchdown. 30 to 10 is the score. So here on ABC next week at 3.30, we'll have Indiana at Purdue as Purdue tries to clinch the Rose Bowl. An amazing performance by the Spartans today, John. Second down. Near for Josh Heupel. The Sooners need nine yards for a first down. Hyper fires for it to the 20-yard line, short of the first down. Those big physical receivers just keep moving around. This time it's Fagan. Last time it was Savage. Then it goes to little Griffin. Big guy, little corner to the outside. Pushes off, balls right there. Perfect job. Buell, who replaced Davis, is being picked on by Heibel. Third down. They've got the matchup they want. Now Heibel is perfect in this drive. He's 5 of 5 for 36 yards. And he puts it right back in the hands of Fagan again, who crosses the 15-yard line. So the chains move again, and the Sooners are on the march. Oklahoma receivers, all of them came to Oklahoma to play running back, defensive back, quarterback, and then the offense changed. In came Bobby Stoops, the philosophy of throwing the ball, and Steve Spurrier Jr., the receiver coach, found some guys to catch the ball. Into the teeth of the crowd at the closed end. First down, and it is Griffin to the 11-yard line. And college football on ABC is brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Burger King got the urge. Dell and Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. A little over eight minutes to go here as Jason Glenn. Uh, 
He comes back, we'll give him a special award. Boy, he had played a great football game, though. Second down and seven. Plenty of time. Dropped. Savage can't hold on. And it'll move to third down. Tried to run a fake screen and kind of sucker the AM defense into thinking screen and push Josh Norman into the end zone. But AM played solid defense, and Heifel had nowhere to go with the ball but to dump it off. Remember now, trailing by 10, if they don't get closer this time, OU can still settle for the field goal and play for the touchdown the next time if they stop the Aggies. Here's the 14th play of this drive. Must reach the four yard line for a first down. Hyper. Time sprints left. He's going to keep it on the run. Dives for the first down. He's got the first down for Oklahoma. It's first and goal. Well, Josh Heupel came out of high school as a great athlete, basketball player, quarterback. He blew his knee out, had to rehab it, came to Oklahoma running a five flat 40. Now he's down to 475, and he needed all 4.75 to eke out this first down. A huge play by Josh Heupel. Great presence, knows where everything is on the field. Here's first and goal for Heifel. Checks the D. Here's Griffin. Touchdown, Oklahoma! Hang on, everybody. This is going to be another of those finishes in college football. So Duncan makes it a three-point game as the Sooners go 77 yards in 15 plays, and they took five minutes and 53 seconds, and now they're going to need the ball back. These games always come down to this fourth quarter one way or another, and now it's, as you said, AM's offense has to answer the bell here. A three and out or a turnover would be brutal right here. Just a fake reverse. Guy coming across, don't hand it to him this time. Just give it to Griffin. Great up, great blocking up front. The offensive line just rooted him out. Griffin goes in practically untouched. Bubba Burcham, number 59, really sealed off inside the outstanding center for Oklahoma. Well, Bob Stoops and the Sooners have been through it this year. Big games, and we asked Stoops about OU playing in big games. We've had a number of big games through this year, and, and our players really uh, uh, enjoy that atmosphere and, and are relaxed in it and are, are really excited about being in, in the middle of it and competing. And that gives them a little bit of an advantage. They have been in the environment, perhaps not as noisy. And this is the first time that anyone's taken them to the fourth quarter, which is where R.C. Slocum wanted to get them. So coming out is Goins. Going slips a tackle. Still going. Breaks free. And so a fine return of 32 yards by Dwayne Goins. And for those of you who just checked in to watch the end of this, Oklahoma, ranked number one and unbeaten, has just pulled to within three as Griffin breaks across for his second touchdown of the day. He has rushed for 69 yards. Oklahoma has 363 total yards, and A&M 246. A&M now in need of a rally. Intercepted, Marshall picks it off. The big linebacker. Oklahoma regains the lead as Torrance Marshall from Miami picks it off and runs it in. 41 yards. That time Mark Ferris 
Tried to throw the ball over the middle. Torrance Marshall said, uh-uh. The two linebackers that we featured earlier, Brent, Kalmus and Marshall, they're playmakers. They're on the field, and they understand the game, and they read the game so well. The young man has a brother who plays for the Miami Hurricanes. He came to play for OU. And he made perhaps the biggest play of the season for the unbeaten Sooners as Duncan adds the extra point. And Aggie Land just a little bit quieter than it has been for the last couple of hours as OU leads it 35 31. Marshall is in here. It's the same defense that Oklahoma has been playing all day. Safety's deep. The linebacker's going to drop right into the play. Ferris never saw Marshall who faded inside. Ferris lost sight of him, and then Mark Ferris misses the tackle right at the end of the play right there. He could have saved his team by making the play, and Wait Marshall walks right into the end zone. Kalmus gets some credit for pushing. Well, he thought he missed the tackle? I thought he could have made the play. There he is right there. Drops right into the play. Quarterback kind of jogs over on the play. And the one linebacker, Ferris, sees the play, does not see the linebacker when he lets it go. And there's the linebacker making one of those athletic plays that they're so good at. They never leave the field. Now watch Ferris as he comes over, trying to help out defensively. Getting set, and Kalmus just pushes him out of bounds. Yep. Does that count? That counts, but I think he could have gone in there a lot harder. He was kind of giving it the job. We saw Drew Brees go after the guy the right way. <laughs> but Ferris is coming back out to play quarterback. <laughs> he will have to. <laughs> There's no choice. Still 7-13, 35-31. Let's take a look at the BCS computer rankings, unless they're re-voting or someone's protesting down there in Miami. I guess they got, you know, whatever the heck it is. Anyway, Florida State, they're winning. Miami has already put it away against uh, Pittsburgh. And how about Florida losing to South Carolina? Well, it's early. We get word that that's only in the first quarter. So uh, a lot going on here today. First down and 10 now for the Aggies. And Ferris has to shake off that last pass. They come back with twos, and the OU defense fired up right now with Ryan Fisher, fine inside lineman, making the play for the Sooners. Yeah, if you ask all the coaches who's the toughest guy to block, it's Ryan Fisher, potential all Big 12, inside run guy, keeps those linebackers clean all day by taking one or two blockers. And boy, have the turnovers told a big part of this game. Remember the block punt, also seven points for AM early in the game. And a field goal certainly won't help now in the last six and a half minutes. Ferris and the Aggies down four. Yeah. Saw incomplete. He threw high to Robert Ferguson. And uh, Ferris may be a little shaky right now yeah. after that interception. I wonder if they got rough in the passer on this one. Oh, would that be a huge call? Yes, it is. Oh. Not exactly sure who it was, but it was just as Ferris let go of the ball. Ferris lets it go. Yeah, that was an extra step and a half that time, and that was the right call. That's a huge play. That's a huge play because it would have been third and long. So time permitting, we'll have the thrifty post-game report with uh, John and Terry. So here's Mike Stoops over there on the side. He and Brent Venables, the cold defensive coordinators, can't be happy with uh, with that play because that gives the Aggies, of course, a fresh set of downs yep. right now at the uh, Texas A&M 32-yard line. Forced from the pocket on the run, lobs, caught, midfield, Greg Porter. Great play by Porter. The ball was behind, the defensive player had his back to the ball, and Porter just reacts to it, puts another first down up there. You know, I always admire those guys that make a mistake and come back and fix their mistake. We saw it with Drew Brees. Now Mark Ferris has the opportunity to dig himself out of the hole he put his team into. 
What they said to Breeze that time was, if you break it, go fix it. That's right. Now it's up to Ferris to fix what he broke. Six minutes. They trail it by four. First down and ten. So then to Ryder, Ferris got to throw off the look. Yes, right from the second. Jones coming up to make the play big time. And let's check in with Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, all of a sudden, Mr. Ferris is starting to be pretty resilient after that miscue the last series. And he attributes that to baseball. He says, you know, you have to learn to live in the present when you play baseball because one night you can go four for four, the next night you can go 0 for four. You can't worry about the past. You got to only think about the future. And the future is second down and nine, Jack, 35-31. From the gun, got his receiver, trying to break free, gained a few more yards, and he is out of bounds, though. Stop, they say. Stop short of the 40 yard line where they must reach for a first down. So Robert Ferguson was battling for extra yardage here. It's been the Michael Thompson on Ferguson all day. Thompson has won one play, but so far, Ferguson started out so slow. It's kind of gotten healthy just in time. Third and two. This is two down territory at this point in the game with the final five minutes. Shotgun, and that's big Toombs right off to the quarterback's left. He gets the call. Toombs barreling. Toombs first down inside the 35-yard line. So for those of you who just checked in for the exciting end of this with Jack Aroot and Gary Danielson, I'm Brett Musburger. Live before the largest football crowd ever in the state of Texas. And Oklahoma has just rallied to gain the lead on this defensive play right here by Torrance Marshall. The linebacker snapped it off. His running mate, Kalmus, makes the final push block. And Marshall from Miami dashes on into the end zone. His brother, already a winner today with the Hurricanes, and wouldn't he love to meet up with Miami down in the Orange Bowl for the national championship? Mom and dad have had a difficult time watching both of their sons play this fall, going back and forth. First down and uh, 10 coming up, and we've had an injured Sooner down on the field. Yeah, it was Brandon Everett who came up to tackle Jamar Toombs that time. He came up with Toombs, and uh, he's a, a little crazy right now. He has no idea where he is. Kalmus and Marshall, the two linebackers, as Everett goes out. Sooner or later, they're going to get you. Kalmus and Marshall, great anticipation of plays, absolutely athletic. They adapt, they can run nickel or regular. And they've been accountable all year. They show up every game. So the clock is running. Inside of five minutes left in regulation. Here's Ferris. Goes deep and high. Caught at the 10 yard line by you know who, Robert Ferguson. 24 yards. This guy's a big time player right here. Ferguson covered. He's covered to the outside by Jones. The ball's up and as Ferguson lifts up, here he is to the outside. One on one coverage. You see the safety's never going to get there from there. You just throw it up and say, My guy looking at the ball is better than your guy with his back to me. And he goes up and leaps, comes down on his right ankle, and that's the one that's been bothered. Jamar Toombs and is back there at running back with a first down and goal, and here he comes again. Powering his way to the uh, seven-yard line, and that last touchdown run of Toombs, Gary, would be very... Uh, yeah, that'd be a nice one of those. I tell you, when he gets the ball, Brent, he doesn't fall backwards ever, does he? I mean, he just takes on people and falls forward, and, and you, you mentioned it before, NFL loves those type of guys who can get positive yards. The game's won with the passing game, but you got to have the runner that can set it up. Joe Weber checks in for this play. He's got the handoff, and Weber to the four-yard line, where it will be third down for the Aggies right there. 
Ferris has the option on that play of keeping the ball or handing it off to the remaining running back. He has to read the defensive end. It was very close that time whether Mark Ferris could have kept it. Third down, OU with a late sub. Still no tombs. Ferris to throw for it. Incomplete. Remember, a field goal won't help him. It's fourth down. Got it. RC will take a timeout right here. Really? Coming up, a play that, well, could be one of the big ones of the season as far as OU is concerned, folks. We'll be right back. Gary doesn't take a genius to think that Texas A&M is going to be looking for number six, Robert Ferguson, who's a big-time wide receiver. You're right. Any chance if he's not double covered, you got to give him the ball. Michael Thompson comes so with him right, right down the bottom. There, yep, right underneath that draft, he's right there. Fourth down, incomplete. Chris Taylor, the intended receiver. OU takes over on downs. All they need to do now is kill three minutes. Mike Stoops defense does it. Ante Jones that time is the guy who got his hand on it. Number 11, going to try to get the ball in here. Jones is the one who's going to try to get it. Actually, Ferguson was not in the play at all. They try to get it inside. Jones gets his, I don't know if it's his left hand or his right hand, but he does an excellent job of making the play and knocking it down. So now Josh Heupel and the Sooners. AM with two timeouts left. 256. The Aggies are without Glenn. They're without Davis on that defense. Griffin, who has one for two scores today. One more time, and there's Mike Stoops says, get over here, guys. Don't celebrate. Don't make a mistake. Just get off the field and let our offense come out there. AM Brent has to force this Oklahoma team to throw the ball. If Oklahoma can run for a first down, that has to be disappointed to AM. <laughs> Look at those guys. They are fired up. I think Kelmas kind of saved an argument between Jones and Stoop that time. Our Chevrolet players of the game. Well, for the Aggies, Big Jamar Toombs, who had a remarkable touchdown run in this game. He's their MVP. And Torrance Marshall. Number 10. Now let's take a look. Two of the most powerful touchdowns you'll ever see. Toombs carries three Sooners to the goal line. And then Marshall snaps off the pass. Gets a push block from his running mate, Kalmus. Dashes in. Second down and five. That wrecking group defense. Can't allow a rushing first down. Got him! A huge tackle in the backfield by Cornelius Anthony. Beat it inside, beat the block inside that time. Anthony, the inside linebacker, is just going to shoot the gap right into the backfield this time. Remember, Oklahoma not even used to being in a three-point stance. Howard Duncan that time. The left guard just got beat across his face. That's an absolute no-no. They're used to pass blocking. They're not used to that three-point stance run blocking. So third and nine coming up. What would you do here, Gary? I'd throw the ball. I really would. I got Josh Heupel. I'd say, come on, Heisman guy. We don't want to give it back to him. Oh, by the way, don't throw an interception. <laughs> yeah, I used to get those all the time. Make sure you throw this thing, but don't make a mistake. 
coming up next, of course, we bring you uh, Tiger Woods and the best from around the world. They compete in the World Golf Championships, American Express Championship. That's next on ABC. Tiger Woods started the day. Five off the lead of Dick Price. on the clock. Third down and nine for Heifel and the Sooners. Aggie show blitz. From the end zone, drops it off. It's complete. Savage, no first down. OU is forced to punt. What a play by Jay, Jay Brooks. Brooks. What a Locked play. Punt. Comes up with a huge Woo, tackle. What a play. Just sticking out his hand to trip him from behind. This wide receiver screen. And watch number 21 just pop into the play from the bottom of the screen. Remember, Jay Brooks has blocked one punt already today. They move him to the outside right. I partially blocked. Field position coming up for the Aggies. It was touched at the 43. So, Texas A&M with Bethel Johnson partially blocking the punt. The second time that the Aggies have rolled in on a punt with 1.33 to go, Texas A&M trails number one ranked Oklahoma 35 to 31. The Aggies are out of timeouts. Texas A&M has had a splendid running day from Jamar Toons. They have an outstanding wide receiver in Robert Ferguson, but it'll be up to that young man. Number 10, Mark Ferris, a one-time minor league baseball player in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. He is 44 yards away from upsetting number one. This is the first time that a number one ranked team has come to College Station with R.C. Slocum as the head coach. Ferris goes deep. Jump ball, second and ten. The incompletion. Ferguson defended by Jones. Tate Jones does a nice job that time turning around and facing the ball. You can back into the guy. If you see the ball coming, the officials will let you get away with that. The ball's just thrown up. Jones backs into him and forces a very, very difficult catch. One that Ferris is fortunate to get away with this. Jones is limping back again. Every time you mean Ferguson. Ferguson, excuse me. Ferguson's limping back. Every time he jumps down on it, he tweaks it again. So that is a big Aggie weapon yep. to the sidelines here when they are 44 yards away. Second down and 10, 126. Three wide outs. Off to the left for Ferris. Comes back to the right side. Right through <laughs> the hands. And through the hands of Derek wow. Strait. <laughs> That's that seam pass that has been very good for Mark Ferris today. He's had a good job of hitting it right in between the corner and the safety all day, and that one he just didn't get it high enough. Josh Heifel anxiously waiting over there on the sidelines for a decision here today. Third down and 10 for the Aggies. Fourth down as Roy Williams, the strong safety, sacks Ferris. Oklahoma defense has been put in trouble all day with turnovers, a block punt, a missed fourth down play, and then another tip punt. But they have responded, and that was a gamble call from Mike Stoops. Roy Williams, the safety, is going to come from the left side. Ferris is going to look right, never sees him, and there's a huge block. And a flag 
comes flying. Probably 12 men in the huddle. 12 people. Prior to the snap, now, substitution remember, infraction, yeah. breaking the huddle with more than 12. Now, remember when Stoops lobbied hard over there on the sideline against that earlier. Yep. And this time he gets the call and it comes at a huge time. It means that the Aggies will need 20 yards on this play. Stop him here. And unless there's a miracle, Oklahoma will stay undefeated in rank number one. But they got a stiff test here today from the Aggies. Team reflects their head coach. He's a battler. He's a defensive guy. He doesn't get rattled. And so far, Oklahoma has kept it together. They got 15 yards back, but they needed 20. And the Sooners will stay undefeated in rank number one. Stay back, the defense is off, 10 yards, three safeties in the back. They're gonna force the ball to be thrown short and then make the tackle, no mistakes. Ball thrown inside, Porter gets it. And come up and make the tackle, and now you can take a knee. And the oranges fly for the Sooners. Oklahoma comes to one of the toughest venues in college football and survives a scare. Josh Heupel's father from Aberdeen, South Dakota, enjoys the performance that his son put on here today. Oklahoma pulls it out. Marshall with an interception dashes in for the winning touchdown. So this time, a big A to the OU defense. RC and Stoops meeting in midfield. And remember, Tiger Woods is coming up next. 35 31, ABC Sports Online at ESPN.com. Keyword ABC College Football. For Jack Aroot, Gary Danielson, I'm Brent Musburger. So long, everybody. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Oklahoma remains unbeaten, coming back to beat Texas A&M this afternoon, 35-31, to the final Oklahoma, number one in the nation, still at 9-0 after the game. A very happy Bob Stoops was talking about it. Coach, first of all, congratulations. That was a close one. Great game. Texas A&M's an excellent football team, and uh, we're very fortunate. You know, the turnovers we had, they played well, made plays, and fortunately, we came up with more here in the second half to win the game, and that interception by Torrance Marshall to, to get us ahead was just exceptional. Is that what turned the game around, in your opinion? Sure it was, to put us ahead. Now, again, our players, too, they, uh, let's, uh, what character to keep, hold in there, to, to keep their poise, and we told them it'd probably go down to the last series. And it did, and uh, to win this way in a great team, an environment like this is great. Coach, they say that a team takes on the character of its coach. Do you agree with that? Because you never quit. Well, I tell you, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't want to talk about me. The players deserve the credit, and uh, and uh, I'm blessed to have a great group of players to work with. Go celebrate. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. Goal sitting out there right in front of us. Let's go after him. And, uh, and we lightened up, loosened up a little bit, and played better. AM's defense played very, very well throughout the entire game. And, and we were talking about it early, trying to stay back. Do you think this is going to become a, a trend, or do you think this is more about you guys as much as it was AM's success? Well, I, I, I'm, they are. They got good players, and they executed in some plays better than us. We've seen this defense before, we've seen everybody drop off and rush three. Uh, really, about every week we get some of it. And uh, so, uh, I, don't, I don't believe there's anything to, real new out there, but uh, they made more plays than us in, in, in the first half to, to uh, hold us down. And, and, uh, but fortunately, by the end, we picked up and made our plays. Josh Heifel comes in as most people's Heisman frontrunner. Didn't have monster stats by his standards, but he's got a huge play with his legs there in your touchdown drive. They brought you within three. Josh is a much better athlete than everybody gives him credit for. Without question, uh, he can run. He's, he's a good athlete, and uh, he just finds a way to win. And uh, he doesn't get concerned with his stats. And if he needs to run, scramble, buy some time, find a guy open, he, he can do that. And, and really feels comfortable doing it. 
Well, the whole Sooner team found a way to win in a very tough environment. Congratulations, Coach Sooners. Two more steps before a potential conference championship rematch against the